Hello? What's up? Hey, Carl, what's up? All right, here we go. We are back for episode two of Bombhole Group Chat. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know what the show is, the concept is basically to be a hub for discussion of current snowboarding topics. We're going to talk video projects, viral clips, contests, and contest earnings today. Uh, we'll be talking to everyone from riders to product designers to industry people and simply addressing the current state of snowboarding. Uh, we're having a loose format conversation about all things snowboarding. Most of the topics are submitted by you guys via Instagram or, of course, our Patreon members. So uh, the show today is presented by Pub Beer and, of course, Run Through a Wall Smelling Salts, uh, Nitro Snowboards, Bubs Naturals, and Icon Pass. And today in studio, we got a cast of characters. We got Zach Hale to my right. What's going on, Hailstorm? How you doing? Couldn't be better. Happy to be here. We're happy that you're here. We here also the banter. Yeah, just here for the banter. We love it. We got Nils Mindich in studio. Nils, what's happening? What's going on, dude? We're happy that you're here. So these two guys are pro snowboarders, as you all know. And of course, we got Jay Stone in studio, who is a product designer with an extreme... What's your title, Shadoon? It's a Senior Global Design Engineer of Snowboards for Woo. K2. Woo! It's a long one. They must have a mouthful. A couple, a mouthful. A couple extra zeros when they had that senior on there, I think. <laughs> big boy salary. Yeah, that's a big boy salary. He's <laughs> calling shots. And speaking of big boy salary, we have Silk D running the boards back there with a glorious mullet. How are we doing, Silk? Well, I can't really see it right now, but it's there. The camo hat's hitting. It's Thank looking you. clean. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Looking good. How are you feeling today, Silk? Feeling good. I don't know about those extra zeros on the paycheck, but still. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to follow up with Chris. Yeah. Get that senior you title. This. Yeah, you're going to have to talk figures? to actually upper management about that. And can, Jules is actually in charge of that HR. department. And then uh, we also got some fun stuff coming out down the pipeline in the show. We're going to be sitting down with the ride crew. So we have Jill Perkins in studio later, Reed Smith and Spencer Schubert. They're going to break down Rated R. Uh, we're also going to be taking a call from none other than Red Gerard and Sean Fitzsimons to talk about prize winnings in snowboarding, which will be really fun. Uh, we're going to be recapping uh, Mecca with Mikey LeBlanc in studio. And then uh, Stoon's going to break down some product talk. So we got a great show today, all kinds of fun topics, saddle up, long format snowboard combo. Let's kick it off with Hailstorm, <laughs> a.k.a. Zach Hale. Uh, you're just in New Zealand. What was going on down there? How was the riding? Uh, yeah, so went down to New Zealand. It's obviously their winner. Um, kind of just go down there for a couple events and just going to snowboard, get the legs ready for winter. But it's kind of pretty interesting. All the national teams are down there doing their thing um, to actually training, real training. <laughs> yeah, what's um, the vibe at the top of the jump line looking like these how, days? How many iPads? What it's, models? It's crazy the difference in <laughs> snowboarding now. <laughs> like it's just, it's so Olympic based where. You don't like you don't know half the people. You don't know half the coaches, but the kids are so good, and uh, it's it's pretty interesting. Who who's your crew out in NZ? Um, I was down there with like Sven Thorgan, Rene Renacongas, um, Marcus Skin, of course. Mm -hmm. Chill. Um, you stay at Skin's hotel? No, we not the Skins in this year. The skins we, in. we all we all grew up a little bit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the beer bong off the off the, the second story kind of lost its... Uh, he says that, but he'll be back there <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah, no, we might do another one. Uh, no, like, a lot of the monster team is down there just kind of snowboarding, and uh, Tess Cody had an event in Australia called the Bush Diff, which was really sick, and then uh, we did the Jossie Wells Invitation in New Zealand cool. after that. So kind of got the whole... Uh, got to see everything. Do you guys get skunked on weather a little bit? Oh, yeah. It's just windier than shit. Yeah, Australia was okay. Um, right when we left, it got warm and sunny, and it looked insane. And then we were in New Zealand, sitting in a wind and rainstorm for a week, and uh, yeah, so it got pretty skunked. But it, it's crazy. It's crazy to see some of those kids are so good at snowboarding now. I mean, like the the 1080 is a 720 now, and then triple cork is the next run, and then now kids are doing you know 1800s. Tiger did all 419s, which was insane. I mean, everyone's just really really good yeah so you said that i would love to hear you break down for those of you guys who don't know uh taiga hasagawa did all four 1980s on one jump which i think's nbd i'm pretty sure who knows yeah uh which yeah. is fucking anyway. insane we're spinning into like ages people are born in at this point which is ridiculous <laughs> the old and head era old head, old you're head swimming era, the yeah. old head era exactly and so i want to know what was it like watching him what do does that it look I, like i i mean it, I mean, he does them so well that, I mean, it just, it looks 
he does them well, so it doesn't look like crazy. I mean, he's definitely spinning fast, but um, I mean, the last one he did, he did back nine. 1980 backside 1980 on that was the last one he did and which is pretty crazy because i feel like that would be the first one he would do you know trying to do like a you know thinking about doing a front 1980s like i would end up on the chairlift <laughs> <laughs> like, absolute like, boomerang off the yeah, lift boomerang. like i would actually end, you'd up, end back, up back on the lift the, yeah you'd like, <laughs> I mean, the, ca- the cab you're like, like so cabs like switch front side it's like dude you would i would do a 540 on the lip before i took off <laughs> it's insane, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Did, um, didn't they try to close the jump or something yeah shit? so and then you know it's like pretty windy that day and everyone's kind of standing around the big air jump and you know taiga is like feeling himself does an 1800 and then they close the jump because of the wind and he was like mad he was like oh. this was my day i was doing this you know so then they opened the jump back up for him later on, and he did it in the wind, which is even crazier. Oh, my God. Like, it's not like this is like a perfect slushy sunny day jump size. Like, this is a windy, cardrona, icy landing, like, I'm doing this today, and did it. Perfect. It seems like kind of like Braveheart vibes at the top of their jump these days. Uh, yeah. Like it might get carted off, right? <laughs> like, you're yeah. kind of like, you drop in, and you're like time for battle <laughs> like you're going in for like the final kill <laughs> you, you're like willingly not maybe gonna return <laughs> yeah i mean it's in it's just there's so many of them who are so good and you're like who i don't who is that even you know mm-hmm. it's like team japan ja- or not team like team china jacket and it's like no idea and then uh kokomo too didn't she do something well yeah kokomo did the f- i think it was the first back triple 1440 from a from a girl and that was like insane too i mean she did it so well she actually the night before or maybe not the night before a couple days before was showing us on her phone the airbag clip in japan of her doing it i'm like that is literally perfect like you definitely have to do that you know Mm -hmm. and she's like oh yeah like i'm gonna do it you know and then comes out on instagram the next day she did it perfect gangster so insane. Sick. I feel like we all learned everything on snow where we have these like or at least I'm speaking for myself horrendous like setup turn to hook like 30 feet <laughs> left to right where the airbag when you're going on the bristles and you learn them like they learn how to go dead straight off the lip. Yeah, the setup turn. I remember I forget who I was talking to about that, but even just like like I was never taught like <laughs> turn here, you know, take off the lip like that. It, the same deal, right? I was just like I got to try to go straight as possible or else I'm going to have a bad time. <laughs> And then, like, you see these kids, and they all have, like, a dialed, like, such, like, a calculated, like, swoop, and then, like, rebound to wind up. And then a bunch of them just kind of go in, like, straight. Like, you don't even see the swoop. It's just, like, on your toe edge a little bit, and they snap off the heels. You can't, on the bristles, you can't even really turn, right? From, I've never actually ridden I've, the bristles. Yeah, I've never. I mean, Seems I like you would have like a be... bristle rail jam at some point, Zach. No? <laughs> they each strike me as, like, a I, bristle guy. I feel like the I bristle be, boys. Uh, I've, I've seen some. <laughs> Scroder's Ranch has a bristle sack in the backyard. <laughs> it's like, got a little drop my, it off the na- shed. My neighbors are like, what is, like this whole scaffold. <laughs> there's, there's a 30-year-old man in his backyard with a bristle set up. Yeah. Back 270. Back 270. I'm just investing. Thinking myself, I got a uh, twenty thousand dollar bristle setup coming off the garage. <laughs> no, I, but it's—I mean—the women's snowboard thing, though, man, is like it's insane. They're all so good. I mean, Zoe too. Like, I mean, I don't know if you saw some of the clips she posted Dude, on there. She had a couple so follow sick. cams from that Which jump in the Red Bull, and it's like perfect. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, they're all so good. I, I'm personally like really excited to watch women's competition still wearing this year compared Absolutely. to the men's. I'm like, stoked. You know, I think about this, like I've called some slope style events and it, you know, they start getting into 16s. It's it, you can you can kind of call it, you know, 14s pretty easy cuz it's like a fast. It's like no one's doing a 1080, so if it looks like a f- 1080, it's a it's a 14. You know, <laughs> and it's like and then it's like if it looks like a 1260, it's a 16. And then but then you get into 18 and 1980 like lord have mercy <laughs> on the announcers trying to call all four 1980s in a row. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> doing that yeah. trick? It's insane. Yeah. I get to 1260 you? and just start tornado vomiting in the yeah. air. <laughs> yeah, <what laughs> so dizzy. That? Imagine catching your edge coming around that fast oh, on a God. back 1980. Well, dude, yeah, to have like, <laughs> like, did you see them take, like, were people getting carted off? Because I feel like your margin for error at like that speed has to be like teeny mm-hmm. if you're going to eat shit. 
Yeah, I mean, I didn't knock on wood. I mean, I didn't see very many people did getting caught. I mean, everyone did like, you try any 1980s, Zach? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about the gate? What about the gator roll? Did that come back at, at no. the event? <laughs> no, I, I. What is the gator roll? I don't even know what is the gator roll. I thought that was your roll. back ten. I thought so. Oh, oh no, no but I like 10. that. I like the back ten. It even come with the gator roll. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get this shit like ten years too late on the double cork that I get. The, that I <laughs> you get have the name. name on. <laughs> the gator roll's got a good ring to it. Yeah, I guess we gotta make that stick. We got that you're like cornrows when you did. In a museum, yeah. like a few years back, right? Yeah, yeah I love that. That still get, that was that was a highlight of my career, right there. Almost <laughs> that and the scarf. Oh, <laughs> that's still, scarf. still getting brought back. I'll never again. forget. <laughs> All right, let's get into. Uh, we're gonna take a call from Red Gerard and Sean Fitzsimons in a little bit here, but uh, before we do, I think. Oh, before we get into this IG question, uh, what project do you film for this past year? You get some uh, footage? Yep. I film for Beyond Metals. Nice. So they're doing movies called Casino. Going to be out in a couple weeks. I, I don't know when it's going online, but we're doing the premiere in Stockholm next week, so we'll be out soon. You uh, guys do a skit? Oh, yeah. did. Uh, we did a full skit. It's. Uh, I don't want to say too much right now because uh, it, was, it was sick, though. <laughs> it was a good week. Do you guys... Uh, who's got the footage in that video? Do you know? <laughs> I mean... Honestly, like Luda has some ins- Luda always has like good footage, but I th- Luda had a really good year. I was with him on a couple trips and he definitely put it down. Uh, Tor Lundstrom mm-hmm. has some mm-hmm. footage, which is awesome. Um, Kevin Backstrom, Kevin Backstrom always, I mean, he, like he always has good footage. Big um, Buck did his own thing, right? Yeah, he's, but yep. Sebe is gonna have some. I th- I'm not really sure how he's doing it yet, but he has his own project coming out, which his footage is also insane. Um, I saw there was a I saw on the teaser there, Mickle Bang's gonna have footage in this Woo! thing, which was pretty sick to nice. see. Sage's footage is gonna, Sage Kotzenberg's footage is gonna be in there too. Cool. Um, Florian is also, he really put it up this year. He's insane. Are you going on the premiere tour? Yeah. Uh, Are you getting your liver primed up? <laughs> yeah. <or>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stockholm is, uh, Stockholm is definitely, uh, a beat down for sure. <laughs> 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 they they go to war they go to war at uh, Cardrona at the top of the jump. I go to Stockholm with Beyond Medals. <laughs> <I love> it. <laughs> it's all Viking blood yeah. energy. <laughs> all right, so uh, we're gonna get into some Instagram questions to get things rolling. We got one from uh, Jay Roman here. What resort in the world has the most talent? And in parentheses, why is it Trollhagen? Who do you think has the most talent? Who wants to take it? Stoon, you want to start it off? Yeah, I'll take it. I mean. I'm from Salt Lake. Been riding Brighton my whole life. Kind of hard to not say Brighton. I mean, pound for pound, the talent is insane. And as far as ATV goes, you know, people can ride everything. I think Brighton's got it, hundred percent. What I do you think? That. I like, I like that, that take. Okay, come back that. Nils. Um, I mean, yeah, Brighton's a good one. I was thinking like. I don't know. I haven't been there in a while, but like locks or something like that. You know, like one of like the park mountains almost that just has all these like up and coming kids because. I mean, you could really dissect it and be like, well, what is talent? Well, you know, like, is it, <laughs> is it like the person with the sickest cliff drop at Brighton or is it like homie with the biggest 1080 or mm-hmm. I guess 1980 at this point? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't know. Maybe locks. Yeah, that's a good There's answer. a firing park there. Yeah. It's interesting. Like if you're taking from a contest perspective, like I've been to Stubai early season and just seeing people chucking trip or sauce Fay early season, people chucking all different directions. I might be, wait, what was it? Can you ask the question one more time? Because uh, I might have a devil advocate. What resort in the world has the most talent? Talent. Dude, honestly, um, and this is a little outside of our like freestyle sphere, but if you want to just be like include all anything snowboarding, Chamonix and what people do oh, there wow. from okay. like the backcountry guy <laughs> oh is just like, like <laughs> the shit like that people do there is like <laughs> fucking crazy <laughs> for, to put it lightly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, my actual, my official, I love the Chamonix answer. My official answer, I'm actually going to go with Highland Hills because I've seen more people, like kids that are I've never heard of on like old setups doing 450s on, and it's just psychotic. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go Highland Hills, even though it's more jib specific, and that's my answer. What do you, what do you got, uh, Zach? <laughs> Um, the airbag in Jindabyne. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, bri- the bristle slope. <laughs> no. Uh, Great there's answer. a lot of talent on that thing. Um, Zach's back no, to bristle know. booter. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I wouldn't want to say like Mammoth, Southern Cal, Big Bear, Mammoth. Those are, I mean, I'm saying Big Bear because I'm from Big there. Bear. But, <laughs> I mean, if you think, I mean, there's like Mammoth though, I would say probably has a lot. Like, yeah. From, 
you know, 20 years until now. There's been yeah. a lot of people who have come out of there. Look at Dusty Hendrickson, prime straight candidate. Up. Danny Cash. It's probably, yep. I'd say it's undisputed that Midwest is best for jibbers. Yeah. I yeah, mean, there's no, sure. there's no, no question parallel. about that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be some people in the comments that aren't happy about that, but I agree. Okay, um, <laughs> continuing, let's get into uh, next Instagram question, Ralph Dog 420 uh, He wants to know, maybe this is a good one for Hailstorm. Uh, great, great IG handle, by the way. Uh, Ralph is it, Dog 420 Is it better to go fast as fuck to hit a rail or slow as shit? Um, I'm a fast as fuck, hit the rail type of guy. Frank April always used to make fun of me and be like, oh, what, you're just going to... Kiss the rail. <laughs> <laughs> kiss the kiss the kiss oh, the, the back to kiss, kiss the rail. <laughs> kiss the rail. Yeah, I like going fast. Yeah, I think it looks great when you go fast. It also depends on what you're hitting. Like a, if you're going on a on a hell ride front board kink rail, you, good luck taking heat in that thing. You want to get yeah. on that thing controlled, but faster probably looks better. Yeah, or just gap it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get, get back to yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I was thinking the same well, thing. What are you thinking? Front blunt four fifty. Yeah, <laughs> front blunt four fifths commission. <laughs> Man, what about the back two you did in Ogden years ago? They took the rail out. Was that terrifying? Was that the huge one? It was like a really big back two. Yeah, it was like this like Ogden gap rail that was like in the middle of the stairs, and you had to yeah. like sh- like right before the lip, there was like these like fence like this chain link fence with poles that like so you couldn't like maneuver very much you know i don't know it was definitely i mean it was definitely scary it was kind of like the it was the burton days you know so i was like i better do this or i might not have a sponsor tomorrow so <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Into that yeah. Hog. yeah winching into that alex andrews alex andrews is on the winch like yeah dude you got this, you got this dude. <laughs> and I'm like, dude this guy <laughs> you, 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 you vibe. know this thing works <laughs> No, Going Blair was. Winch project on him. <laughs> yeah. Classic scenario. All right, Metro, uh, 207 Metro. This is an interesting question. He wants to know, what is up with people still wearing tight pants? Um, any takes on that? Did he bump into, where is he? Does it, depending we on where he lives, he might have. Geographic this must be on the skin track. Because he could have yeah. bumped into. <laughs> <laughs> <tight pants, though. laughs> I was going to ask, it's like, maybe some schemo, schemo yeah. people. It might yeah. just be a simple misunderstanding. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not seeing any tight pants these days, except, except for one other than, none other than Sean White. I feel like my, my girlfriend wears tight pants when she goes snowboarding yeah. like twice a year, but. <laughs> <laughs> silk, what's your Zach, what's up with what's that? I'm going baggy. You got to go baggy. Yeah, Silk. Yeah. need a lot baggy. of room down there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't see, I, I don't know where he's getting this data. I think the skin track would probably be. There the might have just been sense. a misunderstanding. I've mm-hmm. seen some schemo people in a parking lot. That's my guess. Mm-hmm. It's going to come back. It'll go full circle. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, oh, yeah. you're, you're going to watch years. this show in 10 years and be like, oof, God, now we're wearing tight pants again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anything, it's like the, the what's up with people wearing the mega baggies would be a better, more fitting question. I hate those things. So, no, I mean, What's up with people wearing cotton? Cotton, <laughs> you gotta respect it, you know. Yeah, that's triple OG. That's that's uh fashion over functions. What that is, Nils, it doesn't compute in his engineer brain. Why? Why would you not wear the technical <laughs> gear that wicks the snow off properly? <laughs> <laughs> Don't understand. I know why. I've, I've worn cotton. Okay, I love cotton just as much as the next guy. Right? Hey, Nils, why don't you tell people what you did this morning? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I uh, I went on a nice little um, fifteen mile run. With my lovely wife. We woke up Not at five thirty. <laughs> um, she had parent teacher conferences this week, <laughs> and, and uh, today was her first day off. They got Friday off, and uh, yeah, I convinced her to wake up at five thirty with me, and and we went running for a couple hours. There you go. Hence Any follow up questions, no, Chris? That's it. That's it's impressive. Sounds right? super fun. It's impressive. <laughs> Any cotton? Yeah. Um, All synthetic. <laughs> yeah, well, how technical was the apparel you're wearing? Dude, it was pretty well. Funny Give us an enough. OOTD outfit of the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we woke up and I'm like a groggy zombie, right? And I, I didn't realize how cold it was outside, so I put on a t-shirt and shorts and I, like go. I like found out like how chilly it was, and I like saw Bree put on like long sleeve tech layer like running mm. leggings, and I was like, oh shit. So I threw on, I just had like a base layer top. I don't mm. have any like running tops. Yeah, so I went base layer top, mm. full synthetic, okay. not merino wool. Good to know. 
Um, synthetic running pants. Okay, we're going to change and gears. And now that everyone's logged <laughs> off. Yeah, but now that we've lost all of our listeners, we're actually going to change gears. <laughs> get into another question. This one's uh, from Nitro Snowboards. Um, could J-Stone build a board that would work for Nils and Zach as their daily snowboard? Oh, yeah. That's easy. How would you do that? So the great part about Nils, he can literally ride anything. So you just got to make a board for Zach. <laughs> <laughs> and then this guy will take it from there. It's no problem. Good. Put me on a lunch tray. I'll <laughs> have a good day. It's no problem. We'll curate it to Zach. Oh, yeah. you know? Mellow Perfect. roast over here. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. We got a couple more IGs before we hop on a call with uh, before we hop on a call with Red and Sean Fitzsimons here. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, Jib Glib. Jib Gilb. Jib Gilb. <laughs> this is the Jib Guild. Jib Gilb wants to know, how do I get a job in the snowboard industry? Who wants to take this one? Stin. Yeah, I guess I'll take it. Yep. Um, I would say first things first, uh, you got to get involved with your local snowboard community. Wherever you are, show up to every event, go to your local shops, hang out, meet as many people as you can, because each one of those events you go to, you're going to meet somebody new, and that's going to open up a door, and maybe you can meet a rep in your region, get a job, you know, doing some demos from there. And I think that's the best way. It's honestly just try to get involved with your snowboard community. And I mean, that's what I did. I started working at Milo and I'd go to every event at Brighton. And from there, it just snowballed. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I've seen a lot of people kind of go that same pipeline of either. And same thing for pros too, honestly, of like just being a shop kid or getting like a random gig working a demo or like any, yeah, any way you can even at the bottom level, involve yourself <clears throat> with snowboarding. Yeah. It's, yeah. Especially for like, for, you know, an upcoming kid who wants to get sponsored by a brand. If he goes and helps a rep out with some demos, he's ripping that rep has a direct line to the marketing manager, the team manager for a brand. And that's how you can build those relationships. So it's really important to get involved. I like that. Hang out at your shop. Next thing you know, it, your senior, senior role, six figure uh, salary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's just like that overnight. It happens overnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's great stuff. You know, you know what I think about? It's kind of a curveball in this conversation though. Like, do you ever feel like when you get a job in the snowboard industry, sometimes it takes away from your snowboard. Like you don't get to ride all the time. Have you ever seen, I know some people for sure. Have, yeah, have yeah. experienced that. Right? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, my first few years starting my job, it was 60 hour, 60 hour work weeks for two years. It was insane. I barely got a snowboard, but now I'm in a place where I can snowboard more because I'm dialed. But yeah, because you're snapping necks and cashing checks is what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. That's what he's Undo trying P. to say. Yeah. <laughs> senior, but, senior, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> a senior, it's it's senior, senior, <laughs> senior global, actually forgetting the senior and global, <laughs> senior really senior global. AKA make my own hours. <laughs> 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 I wish that that's the dream, but but yeah, it's a labor of love. You know? Yeah, because I think about in some senses like one one way one thing to consider is like if you really love snowboarding, and you want to ride all the time, like find a job where you can like work hours that allow you to snowboard all the time or a seasonal work. You know, I have some friends that do the firefighting where they, you know, in the summer you you do the forest fire stuff and you do that, you stack all your money and then you can snowboard all winter, things like that. I always think if you're like a diehard snowboarder, that's not a bad route to go as well if you want to ride all the time because sometimes you get a job in the industry and next thing you know, you get into this because you love snowboarding and you end up working in the industry and you don't even get to snowboard. You know? Oh, yeah. So it's that, real. That's I've definitely a big happen. part of it. It's going to happen to quite a few people, yeah. <clears throat> I think it's pretty cool, like what, like how Woodward does it. They stay open until 8 every day, too. So it's like you could go work and then go snowboard after real quick, you know? Oh, that's like, that's yeah. probably like a third of my days of the year are nightboarding at Woodward yeah. because, <laughs> yeah, you get off at 5 and you're like, well, I go, go board for a couple hours, might as well. All right, we're going to do one more uh, Instagram question here, and this is from Dan Merrill. He wants to know, what's your favorite Canadian resort, and it can't be Whistler? Who wants it? Ooh. Bald face? I can't, yeah, I, yeah, Bald face is a pretty good pick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. That's an elitist answer. I'm though. trying to think. I don't know. I think I've ridden, uh, I've ridden Whistler, and then what's the other small resort just outside of Vancouver? Seymour. 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 Those are the only two I've ridden. And other than that, I've, yeah. I don't... On the East Coast, I went to Mount Tremblant. Oh, and, yeah. And then otherwise, I haven't, I've only done backcountry stuff there. Yeah, I would say like the, not resort, oh, but Golden. This, I've ridden Golden. Yeah, Golden. Yep. I had a good day at Golden one time. I'll say Golden. Yeah, that's yeah. good stuff. I what, mean, does what? the snowmobile access backcountry count? Because that's my answer. Brandywine parking Brandy. lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. like Bam. What's the resort in Bam? Sun, sunshine. Sunshine. Village. Oh yeah, I've been there. I went there one. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty fun. Yeah, it's, I mean it's really cold, but. I yeah, we're a uh, couple couple south, south of the border. Have any of you guys here. been to, to Red Mountain? I've heard it's awesome. I've yeah, I, I, of like folklore of what's the sickest mountain. I'm I might put red in that cool. that mix. I've heard good things. Dude, you got anything? Dude, never snowboarded in Canada. Wow, I've really? really changed that. that. Yeah. You got to go to Bald Face Resort. Yeah, I mean it says global on your title. It looks yeah. like you're more regional. <laughs> <up there. laughs> you we're it. talking North America here. <laughs> This guys uh, making go, boards going for Canada. This winter, He's never though. even been there. Yeah, like <laughs> senior <laughs> regional you got design test. engineer. We're going to take a quick break from one of our sponsors, and we'll be right back with Sean Fitzsimons and Red Gerard on the line to talk about uh, prize winnings in snowboarding. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about one of our sponsors, Bubs Naturals. Now, Bubs Naturals supports snowboarding. So if you're going to buy an electrolyte mix, might as well buy it from a company that supports snowboarding. Uh, they have 2,000 milligrams of electrolytes in each one of these little packets. They're vegan, no added sugar. That's really important. No added sugar. Most of these other ones are packed full of sugar. Soy-free, non-GMO, gluten-free. It's no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. Their hydrate or die hydration packs are amazing. It's a product I actually use every single day, and I'm not bullshitting. So um, if you're interested in getting some hydration packs, I recommend the lemon flavor. That's my favorite. They're also known for their collagen. That's kind of their staple product. Jeremy Jones mentions how he always uses it to come back from injuries. Good for your skin, good for your nails. So if you're interested in getting some electrolyte mix, some collagen, check out bubsnaturals.com and use promo code BOMBHOLE at checkout for 20% off. Again, bubsnaturals.com, promo code BOMBHOLE, 20% off. All right, we have Sean Fitzsimons and Red Gerard on the line. Uh, how we doing, boys? What's happening? Dude, Rock so solid, baby. Cruising. Where, where you at, Red? Um, I'm at the Mecca event in Denver right now. It's pretty sick, dude. It's like 80 degrees, and the boys over here are laying down snow, and there's two rails, and all of Denver's here. It's pretty pretty amazing, not going to lie. You teaching some kids how to snowboard? I'm trying my best, but I think they're more teaching me, man. I, my rail game has I've, – I've officially lost the rail game in my eyes. <laughs> nice. And uh, love to hear that. We got Sean Fitzsimons on the line as well. Sean, uh, what's going on recently? I heard you came down with the vid. Yeah, I got a little case of vid. Um, <laughs> I think something's going around Salt Lake. It's, it's making a strong comeback right now. It's been taking out the boys, and then the boys around me are falling – and then I was kind of the last soldier to go. That's what happens <laughs> when you when you when you're hanging around Salt Lake City, you just end up catching the COVID. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Hey, Rado, oh, back up! Rado, shoot her down! Oh, easy, Rado. Dude, I didn't know I didn't know Zach Hill was on the line. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, boys. Well, let's get into a hard hitting topic. I think it's really interesting. You know, thinking about you guys going out there chucking gigantic spins, 16s, all that stuff, risking your lives on these giant jumps. Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Red. How do you feel about where we're at in terms of, you know, World Cup and competitive snowboarding contest earnings? Yeah, I mean, it's it's honestly a conversation that me and Sean probably have one one too many times. But, I mean, first I'd like to say that I'm like, I'm, I'm so grateful with like where, you know, like I think that a lot of us live off our sponsors' money and all that and contest money is a little extra if you're able to win them but uh i mean it's definitely not where we want to be you know you, you travel around the world basically put your life on the line a lot would say you know and you're traveling to a lot of the most expensive places in the world just to like try to win eleven thousand dollars at these world cups and What's i mean the- it's again like it's, it's different because it's like eleven thousand dollars sounds great and that's awesome and it it truly is but when you're trying to support or when you're trying to do it for a life, you know, it's 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 just a, a different game. Well, what's let's the breakdown for let's say take a World Cup like first through tenth. I, I'm a little excuse me for my ignorance, but I don't really know the prize breakdown. Yeah, I think it starts at eleven, ten to eleven, depending on where it is. Like locks, locks is different good because they have that owner that uh like is pretty heavy invested in it, and it's like I think it's like twenty, which is awesome. But mainly Dude. all the World Cups are like eleven seven and then three to five right sean well i think locks just recently changed oh, because God. the skiers are now now in locks so they just cut it in half you won locks That's how much you news. win fitzsimons when you won locks 
I think I want to say it was either twenty three thousand or twenty four thousand. Uh, Big ball was Frank, which was sick because <laughs> Frank's better. But but I think the when I won, that was the last year of it because now his skiers are there, so now they've cut it in half, and now it's just like a normal World Cup, which was like eleven. Okay, so you guys are flying out there. You're looking at probably you know one to Five. two G's for a plane ticket. You're looking at two hundred bucks for a lift ticket, I'd imagine. You're looking at you know another G for lodging. So it almost seems like unless you you win a contest, you're really you know especially for people that don't have good sponsors if they're trying to win on contests. Like unless you're podiuming, you're you're not really you're basically losing money essentially, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, if we're super lucky because we have like the U.S. team and the U.S. team supports us all the way through you know and our sponsors on top of that but if you were just some dude with no backing and you're just flying out doing these contests and you're crushing but let's just say you don't have very good sponsor support and you're not on a national team like you maybe if you win the contest you may you will probably break even at the end basically like after breaking tax, even. after taxes too you know and you guys are risking your fucking lives small aspect yeah, I yeah. think that's, like, the Im- important part, too, with, like, the national teams, you know? Like, I'd say the U.S. is probably one of the less funded ones, and we're still super funded. Like, lately, they've been so awesome, like, paying for travel and lodging and lift tickets and, you know, like, going on trips and not having to worry about, like, where you're staying and all that is, like, so ideal. But, like, if you're not on a national team, essentially, you know, it's either on your budget or on your parents' budget or something. It's like, it's almost impossible. It looks next to impossible if you're not having a national team backing or sponsors. Okay, how do you feel like we stack up compared to other sports? You know, if you look at, say, skating, surfing, motocross, F1, obviously (laughs) different ballparks, but do you have any any thoughts on that? I mean, I I think think it's... I think we're broke compared to all those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the lowest. I mean, you go, you go top. If you get top ten, I think you get like a hundred bucks. You get a hundred dollars for top ten. ten. Wait, like, what? It's literally a slap in the face, basically. <laughs> so after the podium, essentially the prize winnings just crash like a plane going into the fucking Andes, right? Like after third place, <laughs> it's like it's, it's bad. It's bad, right? It's really bad. Yeah, you don't want to be a fourth place. Well, fourth place, you can take it. I'm like, I can take it. I mean, dude, you get, you get, you get tenth, and you'll be like, all right, I can buy three people beers if we're in Switzerland. <laughs> and we're buying <laughs> beer. That's great. <laughs> do you guys you get health insurance? Three beers are on me. You, you hear yeah, St- Stone's question? You guys get health insurance through yeah. the yeah. U.S. team? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the health insurance is nice. dialed. Some of the other yeah, teams like actually. Yeah, that's the part about being. Pay their a part of the U.S. team is where they just like take care of all that stuff, which is like so ideal. You can be an adult and still be a kid without having to worry about getting all that stuff uh, dialed in. What do you have to do to maintain your uh, kind of spot on the U.S. team? What kind of GPA are we talking? Yeah, <laughs> Sean. Uh, I think recently it just changed. I don't know. It's always Sound confusing. It's scared. always changing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 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 oh god! Uh, no, I think you got to get uh, two top eights in a World Cup. Damn, which is pretty. It's a random the, dude. It used to be. It used to be insane. It used to be you had to get two podiums and then three top fives at uh, at five star events. Which like there used to be like one person that would officially make the team and then everyone else was like coaches discretion but i think they're just trying to like make it so there's not as many coaches discretions you, you know you know who i feel sorry for is like the 19th place contest rider <laughs> <laughs> no you got to feel bad for 11th man you don't make finals and you don't get the 100 bucks <laughs> 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 and you might lose your spot on your national team. All right, and I think, I, yeah. I think obviously, like we're bagging on it, and I think it's a complex issue because snowboarding is smaller than we think it is. It's not huge, and there's, you know, they, they've cut the funding for the contests, and it's expensive, and I think it's a really complex issue in terms of uh, just 
you know, financially, it's not like we're filling stadiums full of people or have F1 viewership. You know, our competitive contest scene seems like right. it's a little bit of a junk show in terms of like FIS and, and where to watch it and where to find the stream and even the whole format of it. But do you do you think of any can you think of any solutions in terms of like how to make it better? Ooh, Sean, he's, yeah, he's I mean, it, uh, I think a big part is that there's you can't you can't watch these contests. You need like a VPN. You need to be up in the middle of the night to like watch these contests. When you look at a company like WSL, where you'd be like, oh, a surf contest is happening. You go on the website, bam, and you're watching it. You know, and I think just you get more eyes on it, and there's more eyes on the sponsors. Whereas I think in snowboarding, it's more about TV rights than it is like sponsored banners, if that makes sense. So the TV rights make it hard to get a lot of eyes on it. And I think if you change that and you could, then I think companies would maybe see more value on just like having their logo on the course, if you will. Yeah, I totally agree with that too. And it's like we're when you look at WSL and like I think action sports, to be honest, is kind of all on the same boat. Maybe not skateboarding. Maybe their prize money is pretty crazy. But I think surfing and all this is kind of with that as well. But like WSL, the sick part I think about that is that it is just a live stream, and you're not waiting on you know that country's TV uh, TV rights and all that, where they can have those lay days and those weather days where like most of the time when we're snowboarding, like. I'd say one, one, one to two contests a year, it's our best snowboarding. And it's like the best weather out, you know, where most of the time we're just snowboarding in like pretty bad weather because we have to do it for TV rights. And like, that's where I think WSL kills it with the live stream because they can just kind of run it whenever. And they're going to look at the swell. It could be 10 days. It could be whatever it is. And they're going to get the best waves when they want to surf. That's a great point. Wow, yeah. They, they leave it uh, condition-based for a wider window to basically compete when the time's right. That's amazing. What about... And uh, yeah, snowboarding... Somebody does I that. I think it always be easier with... Park. Oh, go ahead. Well, re- uh, Natural Selection does that, right? They, only, they only did it on Jackson and then didn't do it on... The, the rest of them weren't live. Good yeah, point. they weren't yeah. well, live, but that's the weather window, I think is what oh, they're kind of oh, talking oh, oh, oh. about. And then, the, yeah... The, was Revelstoke live? No, not Jackson it was, was the only live one I believe was Revelstoke. Revelstoke was live last year. Yeah, but no AK. Doing it live is the biggest thing. It's got to like, be yeah for natural selection. It's got to be live. I think yeah. too. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing. Yeah, with the cons- comps is that you like if you're hosting a contest, kind of any like sports viewership, the just where the bar is at is that people want to tune in live or they at least want like that yeah. format live web stream or whatever. But then, of course, you get into like logistical hurdles of how to accomplish that. But the park stuff live would be sick because, or if they just had weather windows as well, because mm-hmm. you got these guys doing quad corks and like, if it's all cloudy and shitty out, I'm like, yeah. I don't want to watch that mm-hmm. as much, you know? <laughs> Dude, it just doesn't look nice. You're just no, like, yeah. And that, that's the other thing that I love, or like, I'm like the biggest, I hate big air so much. Like, I just don't <laughs> like it at all. But like, the one part that I can get on with big air and rail jams where it's like, you can bring these city big airs to the city and get people actually involved instead of having to drive an hour to five hours away from their home to watch the last jump of a slope style event where like, I just wish we could do these like city big airs and get people more involved. Or maybe it's like, I mean, they don't even care to see an 1800. They just want to see a backflip from Rene or a double front flip from Dusty or something where it's like, that's where I do like the rail jam in the big air where it gets to come to your city and you get to watch it and you get a little bit more of a feeling where you're getting people into the sport a little bit. Dry I mean, slope rail that's jam a, tour. That's a, <laughs> yeah, let's go to Wendell's. On a flatbed track. <laughs> yeah. Ice rink, ice rink, bristle, snow. Bristle yeah, board looks tour. Like you would pack bristle, bristle J-Stone, tour. J-Stone really, could design it. Let's yeah, really just like it. snowboarding get look good. <laughs> Folds up like one of those So the new shit's going to be the airbag. <laughs> The new shit's gonna be the airbag jump. You're just, everyone's gonna start showing up to this and to the airbag bristle jump thing, and you're gonna show up and they're gonna hold contest on it. And you can just spin all you want. Dude, I would love to see an airbag contest. <laughs> just watching people drive fucking twenty one hundreds. Chris, I'd love to get you on an airbag. Let's get you. Let's get you on one of those things, huh? I would love to try like just a quad front flip and just violently go forward into those things. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so Dude, I, you just go suey. 
Suey backwards layout. <laughs> Suey. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> the, the Sean what? Fitz signature. Suey backflip layout. Well, this is a good, the good yeah. question. We got you guys on the line, and you guys are in this, and you're at the top of this gladiator slope style course. And, you know, we just saw uh, Ty Ga- Hasagawa respect all four uh 1980s spinning into the ages of old heads birthdays uh (laughs) basically but but also respect i want to say but where do you feel like with the rotations and everything you know you guys are in this you guys are chucking where do you feel like we're headed with this massive rotation progression well dude it just doesn't seem like i feel like at 14 we're like well that's got to be it right and then 18s (laughs) come and everyone's like, all right, well, okay, this is crazy. crazy. This has got to be it, right? And now 18s are like, just from videos I've been watching of the training camp and stuff, 18s are like becoming 14s. So it's like, are we just, we're just going to do this again, where 18s become 14s, and then it's like, I just don't even know when it stops, especially now with airbags. People are just figuring it out. They're like figuring out how to do it safely, in quotation marks. Yeah. But... It just seems like it just it's it's just gonna keep going a little bit. I don't really it's, know. Where yeah, it stops. like undeniably respect to Tiger. That's incredible. We're all trying to like. I mean, you don't join the national team to not win shit, and he's trying to win shit, and that's that's awesome. And he's like, he's who we're trying to be essentially. But like, you find these rotations and all that, and like I'm watching him now on Instagram. And I got to, like, slow-mo replay them because I don't know if it was a 14, if it was an 18. I'm, like, trying to find where I'm at watching these. And I'm, like, then I think your average snowboarder, I'm, like, there's no, there's not a fucking chance these guys know, what, know what's going on. So it's, like, <laughs> for sure. Like, I, I'm loving, I mean, clearly your, your Tiger's, like, amazing snowboarder. All these people that are on the forefront of the spins, I mean, like, me and Sean, I guess we, we're, we're halfway there, but... Um, I just, think, <laughs> I just think we just need to re, like almost take a step back and relook at it because you can't really go much more than we're going. I think we we all agree that at some point there's there's no more you can go. You know the jumps aren't big enough, and we're not having the winners that we used to have. So it's like whether it comes to different course layouts involving half pipe trannies and actual half pipe hits and all this different stuff. I just think. We need to take a step back and rethink about where contest snowboarding is headed well, right now. Can we talk to about why is there a cannon rail in every slope style event? <laughs> to double court <laughs> off of. Dude, we're trying to do flips, though. More flips, What do you bro? mean we're trying to do flips? flips. Like, are you guys like, damn, the cannon rail, sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's, basically, it's basically the first jump of the slope course. You, know, you, you take the cannon rail as your 900 jump. You're like, oh, here we go, boys. We, we got a cannon. Here comes flips? the double under flip. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we're just trying to get max, maximum like, airtime throughout the course. I like the no slide back rodeo. <laughs> that one hits, dude. I'm backing that one. No, that one's cool for sure. It's it's all right, it's dude. All right. Some kid at Tessa's event in Australia did switch front board up the cannon, switch back rodeo. Oh, like he dumped yeah, it. Yeah, like how, how do you even do that? Don's got that shit, dude. <laughs> switch. That shit's crazy. Not you could ask Sean to do any flip, and I guarantee you. Yeah, you are the cannon rail guy. Sean. <laughs> he actually. is kind of the cannon no, rail guy. Honestly, put a beat down no, on that, I... that cannon <laughs> hood. <laughs> Engagement just goes. Yeah, I don't think you guys remember about the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> that poor thing got beaten so down. See that, see that cannon rail T line? I'm like, here we go. <laughs> Give me a t shirt and a cannon rail. I'm about to fuck Instagram up. I mean, I don't know if you remember <laughs> Sean Fitzsimons front lip double, front end double out of it. Yeah. So far. Dude, that's what I say on team trips. I. If if you need a front ten double, Sean can do it anywhere, anytime. He's blacked <laughs> out. It don't matter. He can front ten double wherever you want it. The team challenge. <laughs> Pro, so cliff good. drop and Mount Hood at the top of Mount Hood in the summer. <laughs> so a little bit of uh, you can probably milk eight modelos in him. Yeah. All good. <laughs> a little bit of uh, you can milk anything with nipples situation type of thing. <laughs> I had exactly. Milk exactly. Me. exactly. <laughs> what about a what about a slope style contest where they cap the amount of spins you can do? So then you focus on style or like, one jump minimum spins. What are your guys' takes on that? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Just with the with the big air scene, the city big air is like if you could just have a little bit of a cap or like 
basically kind of be a circus act where you just show up and you, you just like make tricks look good you know like that that was beijing Aaron well, style for a while right to that to that me and dusty have been talking about that actually recently when he was in salt lake and we were like instead of just the city big airs instead of making it a contest and i don't know where you find the money for this would be like here you show up you could even have it like small like five g's if you show up and then it's just a demo there's no cap on spins but you're just trying yeah. to like put on a show, you know, like it, it'd be sick. Homies do an 18 and like show you that aspect and then bring it back and do some like really steezy new rodeo or just like a steezy three or something, you know, like, but just more of a demo than a contest. And be like, here we have like the best snowboarders in the world at hitting jumps. Here's a city big air. We're going to show, we're going to show the city snowboarding and what we think is cool. And you can just, there's no cap. There's like, no and rules. everyone gets paid when they show up is what you're everyone saying. Everyone gets Sean. paid to show up and then maybe at the end you can have like you can have like some sort of winner, but like they get they throw an Someone extra wins five keys at that dude. <laughs> or yeah, an e-bike, whatever. That sounds like a couple of people who can't do the nineteen eighty. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's all, that's all show I'm hearing up, right there. You do anything you, you do whatever you want, you get five grand in an e-bike. <laughs> yeah. Just say I think that is anything, what would be pretty cool. Did not go to New Zealand in September to do the nineteen eighty, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, <laughs> you cannot be more accurate right yeah, yeah. So You know true, what yeah. snowboarding needs though? You guys ever been to a supercross? We need more fucking pyrotechnics, boys. Straight up. We fire. Need, we need that guy, the guy with the extreme voice going red, red! <laughs> And then the flame starts and you shooting go out off. the jump. Yeah. Yeah. You go through the flames. <laughs> For sure. Singe some hairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we maybe partner with like a monster truck like tour. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Monster Jam. Monster Jam slash Big Air. I think that would be the way to do it. The well, cannon what, man himself. I mean, we could just join Nitro Circus at this point, you know? <laughs> but but he goes off, doesn't have goggles, leaves with no eyebrows. <laughs> 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 All right, boys. Well, it's been good breaking down the contest circuit with you guys. The and uh, boys, big air. I feel hopeful from where we're headed after this conversation. That's for sure. Yeah, I don't really know if we re- really got anywhere on it, but uh, if anyone's listening <laughs> to this, it needs help. <laughs> it needs help. <laughs> Pay these guys more. Yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. Appreciate the time. Have a good rest of your day. Yeah. Yeah. Adios, yeah. boys. Peace. Thanks for having us. All right. Later. Peace. Straight up. Later. Oh, those guys rule! God, that was incredible. Let's get those two hosting a bristle big Dude, air bristle jump, jam. and then they like unload this thing. It's like one of those circus trucks, you know, that mm-hmm. just like package like a device into like a flatbed. Mm-hmm. You unpackage it. They got the big air jump. There's flames. Yeah, I like monster it. trucks going. Or Sean, it's the boom boom huck jam. For yeah. <laughs> bristle you guys board. are engineers. You guys get some equations going. Yeah. Sean, Sean's the built. ring man. Yeah. <laughs> what Sean's do they call those people in circuses? The ring man is maybe ringleader. The ring. Yeah, leader. is that it? Is the ringleader. He's a carny. The carny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, all right. Well, let's hit a couple questions, and we can we can go uh, check in with Nils here. Uh, but first, we got a Patreon question from Sir Steezy. Shout out to our Patreon members. We appreciate you guys. Um, and this is an interesting one. Um, some people are going to hate this, which is also makes it a great question. Uh, what does everybody do for fitness besides snowboarding and skating? What is the most What is most important to you? Flexibility, strength, cardio. What do your routines look like, and how much can you squat? Uh, maybe we maybe we let Beefcake Hailstorm take this. <laughs> what, did you, here. what did you uh, squat this morning, Zach? You were at the gym. We yeah, did squats we, this morning. We did squats this morning. Yep. How, how are your plates looking this morning? Oh, You're looking a little light on the plates. I got a dirt bike race here. tomorrow, so I was saving the legs. I was going light. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, shout out Sec Fitness that we go to, Chris and I go to, Nils goes to. No, sorry, you're there. Okay, you're not there all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Um, no, I mean, I think just like staying strong, staying healthy, a lot of like power, cardio, uh, weightlifting we do a lot of, and then also stretching. I've started stretching and that's helped me a ton to feel better. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think you just got to find what your body, like what feels good for your body and, do it from there but that's my my advice also like maybe need based too so i guess to answer the question like like i don't i don't really even skateboard i i train and you climb and, and, and run yeah i'm a climber and i eat a lot of granola with chris <laughs> <laughs> 
Nils could do uh, pinky pull-ups. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's uh, right. Like anything, I feel like a lot of us have like something like the set because it just builds out. We're not doing any snowboard specific conditioning. It's just we go in there for an hour and we sort of work on our fundamentals and just like get like a baseline strength. And then uh, everything after that, I feel like is just snowboard more. Mm-hmm. I I think uh, the one thing that's most important is something you can do consistently. I, I see, you know, for us, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, one hour a day, totally doable. You have your friends there to give you shit if you don't go. So there's an accountability aspect. And I think that anything you can do consistently, what happens I see with people that are like, I'm going to get into the gym. And they're like, I'm going to work out every day. And then you do that for three days and you're like, I can't yes. do this, you know? Yeah. But lately, I mean, lately I've been getting like really stiff and i miss grabs and more is and it morning I, stiffness yeah yeah morning morning <laughs> stiffness exactly the, the, the no if you will. Turn. but but i think like for snowboarding flexibility is probably really important because it's yeah. inhibiting me these for days for sure yeah what yeah. do you think Stin? uh i mean i guess for me i'm coming off two knee surgeries so uh i've been doing tons of pt and uh, really for me trying to get back to snowboarding, I'm focusing on getting stronger. So a lot of strength stuff and mobility. Cause that's, if you're, you know, for snowboarders out there who want to prevent knee injuries, hip injuries, ankle injuries, strength and mobility are your best things that you can do. And that'll get you better at snowboarding. You can snowboard longer and you're you know less likely to hurt your knees and do all that. So I've been doing a lot of that. Like you, you don't get hurt. I feel like when you like work out a bunch i mean because then you obviously like build this muscle around everything and like i mean you take slams and i feel like that helps a ton too it's like if you're like this little like you know frail bird <laughs> like <laughs> if you go down it's like it's you're gonna break something or hurt mm-hmm. something or yeah and that's what I, I feel like i've talked to people about that too and um i feel like i train just to pretty much eat shit I don't, I don't, I don't know if my training has made me, uh, any better at snowboarding, but it, it's allowed me to like take an impact or if I take a slam and need to take time off, I'm like still in good shape when I go back. Right. It's almost like I'm like training for the worst outcome. Yeah. And but, you guys are all doing upper body stuff just as much as lower body. Cause I mean, you don't want to pop a shoulder out or whatever. Like that's just as important as getting your legs strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's full mm-hmm. beefcake mode in there. Well, it's like, also, <laughs> I, I mean, your core too, your core is really protects your whole spine and everything as well. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I mean, not to build out too much more on the question, but it seemed like he's also maybe a little curious about like cardio versus strength versus like the different categories like oh should i just run or just do yoga or something like that and honestly i feel like because i'm all of us have been nerding out about it but i've kind of been nerding out on like fitness and training for almost a little over 10 years now and, <laughs> ten and years, like six months 10 years six months not counting three days what's uh, your but, heart rate on your nerd no <laughs> uh yeah oh dude's kind of high <laughs> <laughs> He's right now. Right now. i don't have a good resting heart rate i'm on i have a rush right now but anyways <laughs> Um, everything works. Like you want your strength, which is your muscle to like have be your foundation, but then you also kind of need your cardio and your like heart rate stuff to be dialed. And then of course, if you're going to be doing something like snowboarding that requires mobility or if you're doing any sport where you could probably fall, um, you want like mobility as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, everything, Mm -hmm. but then you also need to rest. And I feel like a lot of people overlook resting Mm. as well. I go in there with one goal and it's to bench more than Chris. Let me tell you something. This guy's an animal on the bench. This guy's, I don't know. We we want to check him for performance enhancing. He's looking like he's performing a little too well on the bench. He's suspiciously putting up weight on the bench. Like you said, he's taking some gear into the sec bathroom. Those plates are looking a little, he's coming in juiced. Those plates are looking suspiciously light for Zach. So that's creatine. the, the, The question he did ask at the end was, how much can you squat? I think Nils has probably got this one. Um, I do remember I did a back squat. So like a back, right, like the bar goes on your shoulders. Um, and that was, I want to say it was like 235 or 245. Mm. That's it nice. was like a, not, f- I forget. I don't know if that's, yeah, it's a little under 2X body weight. Yep. What's What do you got, Hale? I don't remember my. I don't really know what my max is. But What's your deadline? I, I did it. I did eight at 225 this morning, the last set. 
That's light work for the kid. <laughs> yeah. I got deadlift 350. I know that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think my deadlift was like mid 300. But that was that was a few years ago. This is like I love the snowboarders. Now that we've uh, like, now, now that we've lost all the viewers again, <laughs> talking about weightlifting. <laughs> so what's your power clean? <laughs> <laughs> the other the other thing I think that is like really important, like you said, snowboarding to eat shit. It it's like snowboarding is so much more fun when you can confidently eat shit. Do you know what I mean? Like you ever go out there and you're nursing an injury and you're like, I want to try to back seven the jump, but like if I put my arm down, it's good. But when you're out there and you feel strong and you feel spry and you're like solid, you're like, uh, you got some pep in your step. You're ready to get annihilated. Snowboarding is way more fun when you can take it, when you can take a shit kicking. Yeah. When you feel like you're within your body limit, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a good time. Ragdoll prevention. <laughs> ragdoll prevention. Yeah, I, mean, I guess not, you're not preventing that the strong neck. You're preventing yeah, strong yeah, neck. Strong. Dude, you ever get the ones where you wake up the next day and you can barely like pick your head up because your neck oh, is so yeah. sore? Dude, I've had so much neck stuff. It's always... So it's a nightmare. You guys got to get that. You guys see the Instagram ad for like the neck exercise? The thing? Joe Rogan neck <laughs> exercise. <laughs> it's like the, the halo around his head. And he's just doing it. <laughs> it's I incredible. I've like, like, not seen that. He's um, like, dude, my neck has never felt better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the strongest neck in the world. We got to yeah, hit up Raz shit. and see what he's doing for neck exercises. <laughs> <laughs> That guy is all mad. Raz and Tra- hey, Travis on the line. Quick question. What's your Traps neck are touching routine? his earlobes. What's your neck routine these days? Or have you guys seen the jaw one where people chew on the piece of rubber? Uh, yeah, that <laughs> one's insane, too. Dude, but that's like a, that's like, must be like a fighter thing, huh? Yeah, like, I don't know. I mean, look at J.P. Walker's chin. You ever see that thing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, it's the most defined jawline I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, we know chiseled out of stone. Yeah. I bet you like jujitsu is pretty good for snowboarding. Oh, oh for sure. Yeah, dude, totally. dude, a lot of surfers do jujitsu. Put an ass kick. On and, and you won't get hurt. Yeah. And you guys mess with Pilates? <clears throat> I've never Dude, done no, it. I want done it the, the reformer one. Yeah, reformer or I something. Wanna I want to go know. to one. It's like my yeah, like <laughs> I feel like a bunch of chicks have been more psyched on it recently. And then I don't know. I heard surfers are doing it. Have you it, been? No, I haven't been. But like conceptually, it makes sense. I've I heard like, it's yeah, I've done it so once. hard. Yeah, because it's it's putting your limbs in weird positions and making <laughs> oh, yeah. basically like your shoulder. You're putting it like way back here where you would normally pop it out of place. But you're strengthening the muscles in that position. Isn't and there so all that's kinds kinda, of like bungee cords and shit? Yeah, going yeah, yeah on? exactly. Reformer. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, but about, yeah, get your about? legs behind your head pretty easy. Or <laughs> <laughs> Great for a lot I've of people. Yeah. For some people I know, it's helped their legs get behind their head. <laughs> you know, I've seen Hale, what he does after our workout is he actually ties a bungee to the railing and he just pulls the bungee to get, get ready for work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just really get ready to pull the bungee back for five hours. <laughs> Zach, uh, what's your take on the bungee these days? I haven't used bungee in a long time. Oh, really? I don't know. I mean, times are changing. I can't even remember the last time I. I hate the bungee. The bungee is the worst thing. <laughs> there like, you go. Let it out. Like Safe space. When, when you go to a spot and you're like, you're uh, they, it, it, and whoever you're with is like, yeah, like dude, they're speed with bungee, and you're just like, son of a bitch. <laughs> dude, Frank, <laughs> like April, there goes the whole day. <laughs> Frank, April, absolute worst. We would build like a snow drop in that's like six feet tall to hit the rail. And he'd be like, I do not use this snow drop in. And then we would <laughs> shovel the snow drop in down and have to bungee him into it a hundred times. Yeah, after he's we got the done. bungee guy. <laughs> he's like, that guy loves the bungee. Bungee Frank. <clears throat> I The winch thing, I mean, if it's like winch or bungee, it's like winch all day. I mean, yeah. it's like you just have one person sit there and are those? The bungee, it's like eight people. It's like everywhere's cold. No one wants to be there. You're stressed. <laughs> like, are the bungee and winch still being used? I feel like I haven't seen it as much. People are there's a there's a purist push for natural speed these days. I've noticed. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't yeah, love that's the Vans effect right riding there. into uh, something? But it, the hard part is when you got the perfect rail and it's there's no hill in front of it. Are you gonna pass that thing up? I would bungee back. <laughs> that's when you hit him with a bungee back. <laughs> bungee back. <laughs> Nils would be driving right to the rock climbing gym, not even looking at the rail. <laughs> we were on a trip. I, don't, I think it was in Japan for a lick the cat video or something, and I straight up had something like that happen. That, that someone was like. Dude, oh my god, look at that spot over there! And I was like, tra- looking out the window, and I was just like, "Is it bad that I don't see it? <laughs> like, I don't know what you're talking about. I I don't see anything to hit. I'm sorry." All right, have you guys hit a smelling salt before? I'm before? scared. Of yeah, I one at uh, the Save a Brain. I think I'm gonna <laughs> let's, let's, let's do a round of salts. Uh, run yeah. through wall smelling salts available at bombhole.com. Uh, yeah, start. I'll start it off. Where do I send my invoice to you for this, sir? <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, that's a good batch. That's a good batch. Here we go. Oh, wow. We're good. We're back. I don't know if I really want to do this. <laughs> you just pinch it. Dude. Pop it into the mic. 
Yeah. Feel it in my eyes. This is strong. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> oh, dude. I could have used Hail that this morning. Big. What? <laughs> Good. This would have made mile How fifteen feel so, like mile two good. this that's morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah, keep it in your keep it in your pocket for that batch. fifteen mile. What run. do they do in the Ooh. foot on the, on the football games? They hit their eyeballs too. Hockey players do that sometimes. Yeah, the mark, we call it the Markov technique. There's a there's a hockey. Have player you ever done? Have you done the eye? Do the eye. We've done the eye. No, I'm not. I don't recommend the eye for the listeners. Don't do the eye. We're gonna get oh, sued. That, that's a that's a liability. Yeah, thing. I can't imagine it being don't good. Don't do the eye. All right, uh, let's let's check in with Nils. Dude. Like so, so water up my nose. Nils, what, what are we? Uh, <laughs> yeah, convenient timing. What we've been Jesus. up to this this past winter? What's what's happening, dude? Totally. Um, I had such a fun winter. Um, you know, I think a bunch of us did. There was a really good, really good influx of snow around Salt Lake and Utah. Um, but I ended up crewing up with Sage quite a bit, and we had ridden with each other when we filmed for Pepper, and then we haven't really done anything with each other since. And he kind of had a looser program, and I had no plans going into the season, and then all of a sudden we, we crewed up for, for a big chunk of it, and it was so much fun getting to rip around with him. And it was, it was kind of cool to see because his, like, when I for when I last time I went out with him, he was just kind of getting into backcountry, and then now, of course, he's, like, the one of the guys. Um, so just sort of getting to, like, build jumps and, and hitch it and the banter of course he's the banter king yeah um so it was great i was psyched mindset was good stayed healthy for the most part and just got to like honestly my goal last winter was just to try snowboard as much as possible um and i didn't have any project i was focused on uh sage and i put out two edits um and then towards the end of the season i kind of just kept riding and had like a few other random sessions but yeah i was psyched it was a good season Killer. And then uh, you got, you're putting together all your footage and dropping a video part with us, actually, right? Yeah. Yeah. With you guys on the bomb hole. I'm psyched. Um, yeah. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do because, again, we had like two edits of our footage come out midwinter. And then the end of the season, I sort of ended up with like a conglomerate of random clips. Like, you know, I hit Chad's gap and I hit Pyramid's gap and we hit some other like mega gap in Wyoming. So, um, I kind of wanted it to live somewhere, um, and I have some shots coming out in a Solomon video this fall, and then the Chad's Gap stuff is turning into a video for Backcountry that'll be like part of their Venture Beyond series. So, a lot of this footage has already kind of been seen before, but I still just wanted it to live in one place and you know pick out a song for it and like kind of just have like a little vibe and. And it's it's like a nice little resume. Cool piece too, you know. To yeah. See it all in one place. So see it all in one place. There's no footage yeah. in Sebe's movie too, right? Yeah, I think I'll have like I don't know my Chad's Gap session because Sebe and I hit Chad's Gap together. Um, and his clips, I'm really excited to see in that movie. He he showed up, and then I kind of had like a lackluster session, so I wasn't sure what was maybe gonna make the cut with them, but. I think a shot or two will be in Buckwild. <laughs> can we talk about the Chad session, or is that too? too I'm soon? comfortable because talking this about is, it. This is a really interesting yeah. topic. Actually, I, I forgot about it because we talked about it. It was so long ago, mid, you know, end of the winter. But uh, why don't you take us through what trick you had in mind and, and your whole experience with going to? For those who don't know, Chad's is the biggest gnarliest jump in Utah, and you know, only people like Travis and Sage and Romaine have really stepped to it. It's fucking gnarly. It's right yeah. behind Nils right there. Yeah, and uh, Sage back twelve oh, yeah. it. Sage uh, back twelve it, which is gnarly. But you had a you had a really unique trick in mind. I'd love to hear you explain it for our listeners. Yeah, totally. So the whole story of of hitting it, um, we weren't to quickly run through it. We weren't really planning on hitting it. We had been looking for a window in April because you kind of want to do it in the spring when the snow's softer and you can build it out easier. Um, and that just, as we all know, like it just never really stopped snowing or storming, and then the storming kind of turned to raining and. <laughs> It just didn't seem like it was going to pan out, but um, Sebe was in town, Sage was in town, and <laughs> we had just like the we had just hit a, a hit the previous day, and like this whole week, I thought I was kind of done for the season. So I was like, I was starting to go running after riding. I was hitting like the gym. I was climbing. I'm I'm cooked. And needless to say, so we hike up this gully to go look at Pyramids Gap and realize that people are already building Pyramid's Gap and we're with Sage and Sage is like, we get to Chad's Gap before you get to Pyramid's Gap and Sage is just like looking at it and he's like, guys, this looks so good. Nils, you were saying you wanted to hit it this year. Like, I would, I was like, God, <laughs> Sage, you has, Sage has no intention of hitting it. No, either. no, and he was clear. He's like, 
I'm good. <laughs> I'm not going to hit it, but I will totally support you guys. And I was just like, and Sebi, you know, he's got this sick project going on. So he's motivated to hit it. And I was just like, had, had written it off. And then I was just like, Ugh, fuck. And we proceeded to go straight into building it. Spent a couple days building it. It was logistically, it was kind of a nightmare because the canyon kept closing due to the flooding and like wet natural avalanche cycles. Um, so then the actual jump day comes around and the backcountry crew who was filming it in conjunction with Sebe and Sage's filmer, Jerm and Willem, uh, they hiked over from Big Cottonwood because they have nine to fives and they needed to get back for work the next day. They couldn't get stuck in the canyon. So they're planning, all of us actually, like we're planning, a, we maybe had to hike another like thousand vertical feet and two miles after the session to get into the next Canyon over to get home that night. That was like our plan. If the can, well, the Canyon did close, but if it wouldn't open. So that's like in the back of your mind. Right. Um, and it's a then, monster build insane. and it's a monster build. It's just exhausting. It was, you know, I don't know, probably 30 hours of work with eight people. Um, so then hitting it, you're of course talking about and bouncing around trick ideas and like, a lot of people have hit it and there's sort of like the jumps interesting because you um, have to just go straight through the the whole in run. You can't do like the textbook contest setup turn or anything because there's so much compression from where the downhill section transitions into the takeoff. Um, and anyways, yeah, I decided I wanted to try a switch back seven. Bold move. Crazy <laughs> trick. And what's <laughs> what's tricky about that is A, going and switch to like a savage compression zone um, at that speed. And shout out Sex Fitness. Shout out Sex Fitness. <laughs> like straight up my like, it was the first time my like uh, vision was like bobbling because you're going so fast. Um, and I forget what like Bjorn years ago measured it and it's like 60 or something miles an hour. You're hauling ass. It's like as fast as you would go straight lining at a big resort, but you're trying to jump over a ravine. Um, so I'm going I'm going down switch doing that. And what's tricky is that for me doing switchback seven, I would trend to the right because I spin right. But you actually need to like trend left off of the jump to get the landing. If you go too hard right, there's things like a tree and a dirt patch and then more trees. <laughs> Um, and it going 60 miles an hour, hitting a 120 foot gap. Like, like a little sail chime. Let me turn the blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, man, yeah, I just, I decided, like, I guinea pigged it. I did a front three, I cleared it. And then I was just like, what's the gnarliest, most technical thing that, like, I could maybe do my mindset for the whole season was like sort of pushing myself i wanted to like keep getting out of my comfort zone and like see what i could do with my riding and i was at a position that was like well i have a bunch of footage i'm healthy it's been a good year let's see what happens so i started trying the switchback seven and i think i took like i made it to my feet every time and even one of them i'm like still maybe i might use it but i don't think so i like land compress bounce and in the air just my body rotates and does a 180 and i like ride out and i was just like yeah I, I think i tried it three or four times every time it was to my feet and like in the sweet spot and i just could not like the impact was like too gnarly on the landing i think our trajectory was maybe a little off and i was just so so tired like I, it was the most tired i've ever hit a jump like the hike for that thing's pretty savage too every go yeah yeah you're doing i don't know like at least 400 vertical feet and your adrenaline's cranking. So after you hit it the first time, you kind of like, for me, I'm analytical. So I'm like, <laughs> I kind of need to like stay tapped in to this energy and the adrenaline right now and not like take a breather, like, and, and calm down. <laughs> I need to not calm down. I need to stay freaking amped. Um, and you try to like ride that. So it's and I were just hot lapping it pretty much. We'd hit it, rip back up and then like hit it, rip back up. And he, uh, he like compressed and blew out on the in run one time, uh, on the battle for his trick and his tricks really dope. You'll have to watch his, his movie. It's extremely impressive. I was psyched. And then, yeah, I, I decided to not try the switchback seven and, and go in regular. And I was like, Oh, I'll do something chill and do a back one, which also hadn't been done on it. Um, and then I it like was getting a little more iced over and I was tired and like I compressed out and G'd out on the in run and like flew off the side into the goalie and I was like, okay, I'm done. 
That's so. This didn't work out. Fuck. (laughs) I remember how how I wanted to. Ferg tried to back one that too, and Sage and him, we all built it, and Ferg was trying it back one. He couldn't land. You got shot in the ravine, didn't he? Once, yeah, yeah, on a guinea. I like video of it on my phone of him just compressing just into the ravine. Like Ben Ferg is like, you know, most board control person ever. And I saw that, I was like, this thing is no joke. Yeah, seeing Sebe hit it because I couldn't see myself hit it like it was just the two of us and it was interesting because like the canyon was so quiet i think chad's gap kind of has this notoriety that like once word gets out like all you know all the village weirdos and everybody in town sort of makes their way up and there's this like amphitheater seating that you can just watch the show from you know so there's these other stories when sage hit it and travis hit it that there's 20 30 people watching and ours was just a film crew i don't have a single iphone clip of hitting it because like everyone was up there working and the canyon was closed so it was just like quiet sort of eerie like landscape yeah i don't know it was it was really intense man i don't know <laughs> it's a lot if you could go <laughs> back in time would you try switch back seven again or would you try a different trick mm, i would still try the switch back seven yeah. yeah and honestly like it wasn't too like having done it once i i would like to go back um, to do it. And there's like other stuff I would like to do on it as well that I think I could. What about back nine? Yeah, back nine would be cool. That will be easy for you. If you yeah, like. back nine would be cool. Um, and then, I don't know, in my mind I'm like, what's my kind of fuck you, this is Nils trick, right? And that's I like, like that, yep. that kind of attitude is what I had. I was like, what would no one else want to do? And essentially that was the switchback seven. What <laughs> would nobody else be stupid enough to try on this? <laughs> yeah. Switchback seven. Tor- <laughs> towards the tree. <laughs> towards the tree and the dirt. Let's spin wrong direction, 30-hour build, heartbreak hotel. Yeah, you know? but it's, I don't know, it's like maybe a good process. I feel like that was kind of on par with my whole winter is I got like 90% there but not 100%. So it was a good, like, learning curve of a winter to be like, okay, if I want to push myself to my limits and try be, like, one of the top guys, this you're just going to have those moments that you have to gamble, and I will lose. Because I would say, typically, I always play it safe, and I always land, mm-hmm. um, which is great, but then when you're trying to, like, break through, you just got to take some risks. No, they're just saying he always lands. He always lands. Yeah, yeah. No, I play it safe. <laughs> Zach I play it I know safe. Yeah, yeah, I, I land every time. So uh, <laughs> land. <laughs> do you ever think about Tr- T. Ricky and those guys hit it with a heli bump? Do you guys remember? Like, oh yeah, they were like totally. imagine, they, I they bet they were getting bumped been a, up. Yeah, they the were just riding down, getting picked up, and getting heli bumped. So imagine yeah. how much easier that would be on your legs, dude. Totally. You can't do that now, can you? No way. Um, I don't know where I they grab you. Don't think they were getting picked up in the lot. The parking, they would ride out the whole goalie and then get picked up in the parking lot. Yeah. They um, would ride all the way down, one hit, and then and go I, back. Yeah, I don't think you could get clearance to land unless there was an oh, emergency yeah. there or something yeah, like that. Yeah, good point. Yeah. There's like some more logistical things that have been implemented yeah. over the years that I'm not sure you could pull it off. Um, yeah, it, it was... I don't know, it was so funny. I So I guinea pig it, and uh, I get, I'm down in the goalie, and I'm waiting for Sebe, and Sebe like comes down afterwards and he hits it we're both in the goalie and he was like both of us were like holy shit like <laughs> he, w- he was like was the lip really weird or like what was up with the- do we need to fill it in more and I'm like dude I think it's just that gnarly and he was like oh my god it's so gnarly and <laughs> you know, Sebe is like the dude can hit jumps yeah, better huge, than anyone. Yeah, like yeah, huge yeah. jumps, so he's much control. One ninety two, probably. Yeah, yeah. And like oh yeah, custom one seventy two. Yeah. 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 yeah, So like both of us, <laughs> like <laughs> students got the specs on the board. <laughs> yeah, got the yeah, specs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, both of us kind of just being like, oh fuck, <laughs> like what did we sign up for? <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I mean, we'll, well, we're going to get into product talk a little bit earlier, but that I'm interested. You designed a Custy uh, K two what board for? Uh, Big buck because he's what six four or some shit. Yeah, six, he's two. huge. Yeah. Um, so it's the antidote. It's the board Sage rides. Him yep. and I built that board together, um, and yeah, we just made him a custom one seventy two extra stiff. It's huge. I mean, it's like I'm six two and it's like to my eyebrows. It's such a massive board. Really good yeah. for shaving. Yeah. Shaving the lips down on the jumps. Oh you yeah, just have so yeah. much. Board I remember to work you with. dropping that board off my house. I was like, oh. Dude, <laughs> yeah, it's a tank. I've never ridden it. How's that thing for like a nice nose presser at King Crail? Dude, absolutely no chance for anyone but him. 
<laughs> I like it. Well, uh, and then also, you know, while we're still talking Nils stuff here, you, uh, you're you in the podcast game now. Dude, totally, yeah. I guess, I mean, there's there's a whole snowboard thing going on, right? I'm pro snowboarder. Freaking psyched on it. Um, yeah, we got the video part coming out. We got a uh, backcountry Venture Beyond episode coming out. We got a Solomon video coming out. Things are, you know, having a good time. Um, and then I've kind of been thinking of like other ways to spend my time and what are like some other things I could sort of start pursuing. And, um, I had this opportunity come up in the spring with Backcountry that they, uh, they wanted to start a podcast and, um, asked if I wanted to host it. I, I've never hosted an interview or done anything like that. So seems pretty easy. <laughs> it's extremely <laughs> easy. Yeah. It's maybe the least skill based <laughs> pursuit I've ever done. <laughs> just show up. I'm not, I'm not fucking with you. <laughs> no, honestly, I was so nervous and I didn't want to mess up. And I like watched quite a few of your episodes. I was watching other podcast episodes. I was just taking notes on like intros, outros. How do you transition? What should I like? How do you like formulate a conversation in a way? Right. Cause it's, a, it's like a structured guided conversation. And, um, Anyways, it's been it's been a really cool cool venture to to go on with them. It's um it's called the Backcountry Podcast. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. You know, Spotify, Apple Music, not YouTube. just snowboarders though. You got all kinds of backcountry people. All kinds of yeah. It's it's more um it is essentially the 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 north star that we have is that it is conversations with people that work in the outdoor industry and uh, they get to share their insight of what they do and and how they operate. We uh, we had Jay Stone on the other day, talked about tech. Okay, let me just hit Jay Stone with a little special uh, sound bite for that. Yeah. Oh, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's been rad. Yeah, I got to interview like the founder of Goal Zero, you know, was, he was like a philanthropist and getting his story and um, Remy Metallier the other day as well. He's like a savage mountain biker. I've done some... Uh, skiers and photographers and stuff like that so it's, it's for me it's kind of been a good spread because i'm like half interviewing the person then i'm also half like hypothetically asking for a friend here if you had to go back in time and you were 28 year old snowboarder how would you have made this decision yeah, totally. right? and like you what some, stocks do you buy yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there's like some successful people that have come through and i'm like so what, how did you, you know, 100%, for, you know, dude, like you get to learn a lot. I don't, I'm sure it's been similar for you. Oh, dude, when you have like really talented people sitting in the chair and you have the, the like incredible opportunity to interview them, like so, I pretend like I'm asking for the audience. I'm trying to get personal, like picking the brain of somebody who's done amazing things or is inspiring is, is, uh, is such a, it's such, something to be grateful for. And it's always yeah. great to have a good mind there. Yeah. And one totally. thing I want to clarify for backcountry, it's backcountry.com yes the the you know outdoor e-commerce, e-commerce website. website exactly yep. just to clarify so people totally. understand that yeah. also my outerwear sponsor yeah yes cool so there's a connection yeah and then oh also one more thing not to drag this out too much more but um i'm kind of building out uh this little project with protect our winners as well uh, i forgot to we didn't even talk about this prior but um essentially i'm trying to they reached out to me thinking seeing if there was anything that they could help with help facilitate if there was any events or speaking things or whatever like what my goals might be um and the idea is that i'm going to be doing like a kind of just a small series of uh like classroom presentations um so my wife's a teacher so i kind of have direct access to a seventh grade class and you know the idea is i'll be able to like go in and talk to these kids and kind of just share my story and then sort of transition and talk about carbon footprints and just try to have a conversation with 12 year olds about carbon footprints. And that's kind of the cool the vibe. respect. Yeah. Rad. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like a neat thing to, to do and maybe a way to, uh, try to give back or be involved in other, other aspects. Damn. Damn. Zach, you hear that? <laughs> 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 Zach, I also ran. I also my, ran. Uh, he's like, he's like, he's like my my uh, wife's a seventh grade teacher, and uh, I'm gonna go uh, teach kids about uh, you know carbon footprint. And uh, I'm like, cut to Zach just like fist bumping in <laughs> Vegas, <getting laughs> shit in the corner scooping creatine. Hey, I just, <laughs> 30, I just going on eighteen. I'm like, I know, you know, I'm, I'm still in a long distance relationship. <laughs> I know my lane. I'm just leaning into it. Dude, All right, stuck. that's yeah, awesome. That's, <laughs> that's fun stuff. All right, really cool here. Um, we're gonna take a quick break and talk about one of our sponsors, but we still got uh, Jay Stone's gonna dive into all product questions. It's gonna be really fun. We got to check in with the Ride Crew and Jill Perkins. They're gonna be talking about their new video, Rated R. 
check in with Mecca, and we're going to be answering a bunch more uh, Instagram questions. So uh, stay tuned. We've still got a bunch of fun stuff coming up down the show. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about Icon Pass. Now, here in Utah, we already got snow in the mountains. So it's time to get your pass. The good stuff is coming. They got pass options for everybody here. They got the Icon Session Pass starting at only $279. They got the Icon Pass two-day. They got the three-day and the four-day pass option, depending on how much you want to snowboard. And then they got the Icon Base Pass, which the Base Pass opens the door for an entire season of fun with limited blackout dates across across most of the 50-plus mountains. And, of course, the Icon Pass, which provides the most access, most mountains, no blackout dates. And they got mountains all over the place. They got 178,000 skiable acres. In North America, we got some hitters here. We got Mammoth Mountain. We got Palisades, Aspen, Snowmass, Copper, Snowbird, Jackson Hole, and more. You can pretty much get after it all over North America with the Icon Pass. Also with the Icon Pass, you get 25% off for friends and family with up to 10 lift tickets. You get 15% off food, beverage, and retail if you're trying to get some food in the lodge. So remember, from only $279 adult and $0 down, unlock 50-plus destination worldwide. Prices are going up soon. The last day to save up to $70 is October 12th. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about some bomb hole stuff, some b-hole action, if you will. Uh, first things first, we just dropped a new hoodie. It's called the Shop Hoodie, high visibility. If you're on that job site trying to be OSHA approved, swinging a hammer, get yourself the new Shop Hoodie before it's sold out. It's selling really quickly. We also have breaking news, new branding on the Smelling Salts Run Through a Wall packaging. Uh, new branding, same salts. If you're trying to whack a salt, and run through some sheetrock. You'll be ready to go with that. We dropped some new hats on bombhole.com. So we got some new dad hat styles. I'm wearing the the dad hat style. And then we got a bunch of other designs that our graphic designer, Drake, killed it on. So if you want to keep that lid, my phone's ringing. If you want to keep that lid just looking fresh, be sure to check out bombhole.com, where we've also been uploading other videos. So we've been trying to make bombhole.com a destination website. We redid the whole thing. We are uploading other people's videos on our site. Shout out to Holden Barth. He's been killing it on that. And uh, so make sure for all your content needs, go to bombhole.com and check that out. And lastly, we noticed a lot of people that are listening to this on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts or watching on YouTube, not subscribed. So I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but just you won't miss any episodes if you subscribe. So be sure to do that and check out bombhole.com, not behole.com bombhole.com. We got a bunch of new products coming this fall. We got snow at the top of the mountains starting to come here in Utah. So you know you need a new hoodie. You know you need a new beanie. Go to bombhole.com. Whether you got a gigantic anchor head or a tiny pea head, we'll get you covered. Bombhole.com. We got Jay Stone in the hot seat right now because everybody's been asking. We, we, we put out the feelers. What do you guys want us to talk about? Everybody's so horny to talk about product. And let me tell you, your guys' fantasies are about to be <laughs> oh my God. answered yeah. because we have a product <laughs> god here. Again, what's the title? God damn it. <laughs> what do you make global? <laughs> what do you make global design? Design? <laughs> yeah, it's snowboards. For K2 snowboards. So you're, you're just to give you a back down, you design snowboards, you're a fucking engineer, you're a math nerd, and you're a good snowboarder. So you put all that together. Yeah, make basically. K2. Yeah. Okay. Just going to give a little context for <laughs> yeah, that. That's a perfect summary. Okay. Uh, and then let's start it off with a question from Chilton. Chilton. Yeah. Chilton. This is a good one. This is my old boss, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, he worked at Ride for a long time designing boards and learned a lot from this guy. All right. What he wants to know is, does tech matter? Is shape or construction more important in board design? We'll start with that. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, I think a lot of people always get caught up in all the bells and whistles with product. Um, at least for me, when I'm designing a board, you always want to start out with a really solid foundation. So just like the, the basics, good core, good fiberglass, good base. You want that board to be 90% of what the board is. So really, really solid chassis. And then you want to sprinkle in tech to make the board that much better. Right, but so you're not just throwing a bunch of shit into a board and hoping it's amazing, and then putting a bunch of marketing 
schemes with it or whatever. Uh, it's just like, I guess a good analogy would be like, you know, for a dirt bike, you're not going to buy a piece of shit like 1990 Honda and then throw $10,000 worth of aftermarket parts into it. Right. Like you want to start with something. I really, might do that actually. You might yeah, do that. Yeah. That but you know like what I'm saying? Like, you know, like a, Chris's wheelhouse. real um, <laughs> But you want to start with a really good foundation yeah. and then add in tech where it makes sense. So, you know, maybe for a beginner, tech isn't that important. They just need a really good, you know, flex pattern, camber profile, side cut. But as you start progressing and you can notice the tech on the board, then it's going to help enhance your riding. Mm. So, yeah, it's, I mean, there's definitely a lot of like, I would say like faux tech out there. And there's a lot of stuff that uh, works really well and makes boards ride a lot better. But it's always you got to start with like the foundation, the chassis, the board, and then build up from there. His part two was: uh, is shape or construction more important to a board design? Damn, that's hard. Uh, I mean, overall shape, like as far as what the board's intended to do. So whether that's park board, power board, it has to fit that need. But they kind of go hand in hand because you know if the the construction is shitty then the board's not going to ride well and it doesn't matter what the shape is because that's a lot of that can be aesthetic at that point mm -hmm. so i would say yeah construction's probably number one and then shape right behind it what's the look down factor what is that factor? oh that's huge aesthetic is everything if it if it looks crazy under your feet you're it's probably not going to ride nearly as well i'm such a firm believer in that okay i want to know this is something i'm straight up don't really even understand to this day. <laughs> and I'm going to say it. I'm asking for a friend, but I'm not. So, you know, I've gotten some snowboards and they're fast. Like you, you, you wax them, you get two snowboards, you wax them the same, you scrape them the same. One board you put down might be hauling ass. The other one might feel a little bit slower. Can you explain the difference between like centered versus extruded bases? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so we'll, we'll try and keep the like nerd talk to a minimum here, but uh, the plastic itself that makes the bases is the same, but there's a, a thing. So the processes are what differentiate the two. Um, so, you know, extruded base is like a soft, you can think of it as a softer plastic that can melt. And so when you're making extruded base, you take all the, the plastic powder, melt it into a big pot, and then you push it through an extrusion machine, kind of like how, you're, how you make Play-Doh. Like the, the little Play Doh extrusion thing. Where's our demonstration? Yeah, yeah. We, we've got this. Yeah, let's do the demo. Yeah, yeah. 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 We got, video yeah, yeah. I really want to hit this one home for you guys. So we have yeah. a Play Doh demo that Hale is going to demonstrate for us. Oh wow, yeah. Hale's going to be our our like, is, hand model. Yeah, yeah. This is like a like third grade classroom with crayon. Like, yeah, no. this is this is amazing. <laughs> this is most, actually what Nils is doing at a seventh most, grade tour. For, like, what are most boards? Like, well, okay. How about an easier question? If you're going to buy an expensive board, what kind of base is it? It it'll be centered. Okay, so yeah. centered's more. Yeah, yeah. So if you're like, for customers out there, if if you're buying a board that's over four hundred and fifty dollars and it has an extruded base, like that's a no fly zone. Got to get that play doh out of there. So you look stressed. You look stressed out when I hit. Your I table always look right. stressed out. Like, yeah. <laughs> what? what is this? Yeah, like the audio anti? levels are jacking. I'm just I'm just trying to keep the audio tight for our listeners. All right, so you got to spin, you gotta spin this stressed. spin this thing towards the camera here. All right, so so the Play-Doh, that's going to represent your your melted base material, right? And yeah, so you yep, can go ahead, put pick, it in the pick thing. a chunk out of it, like split it in half. So, I, I, I mean, so that's, for Play -Doh. <laughs> so that's your, uh, so the Play-Doh is your melted base material and it goes into the extruder. Oh, yeah, there we go, Hale. And then it gets pushed through what's called a die and that die will be in the shape of your base sheet. So do that, yeah, towards this, yeah, yeah, there we go. And no, push it down. Push it down, and it's gonna come out of those little dies into sheets of base material. Damn, right that looks there. like a little mini fingerboarding base. Is yeah. what that looks like. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's how extruded bases are made. Um, so it's great because you know the, the manufacturing process. It's much cheaper to do, um, and that's why we do it on low end boards. So yeah. you're it's able to you know you get a good quality base that's easy to repair and it doesn't cost a ton to manufacture. But when you're getting into sintered bases, the type of the plastic can't be melted. It's something, it has a super high molecular weight, and that's where, we'll stop there. If you wanna know what molecular weight is, you Just can- Just ask you, Chris. You can Google it. Um, Blazing over over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, this is, I'm actually really interested. Keep going. Yeah, but so, so the powder, it's like, think of like a really, really fine sand. That's what the powder is. And so that- Bags, bags of sand. <laughs> 
It's a bags of sand situation here. Sorry, continue. And so, so they that powder can't be melted. So the sintered powder can't be melted. So they have to do what's called sintering, which you take the powder and you put it under super high pressure, and it basically fuses it together. So Nils is going to do a little demonstration here. Um, so we can pretend these wet marshmallows are the sintered particles that that like fine powder and basically during the sintering process you're pressing the powder together to form the base material i mean you got to kind of get your hands in there so you got to smash it basically. yeah you basically so you're smashing everything together and that's what creates your base so it's actually not nothing's melted together but it's it's actually yeah, kind of like, uh, you know, like sweet tarts, the candy? Yep. So how it's like a little tablet. Yep. But then when you crush it, it turns into powder. Yep. That's ex- that's a sintered. Okay. The, the sweet tart is sintered. It's the same exact process as how you make so it. So it's just a smash together block of particles. Yeah. And yep. and uh, so we'll get into why. So that type of plastic, the super high molecular weight plastic, it's much more durable. So it's way more scratch resistant. Um, so that's why you're, you know, you're putting it on really high end boards cause you want the durability. Um, and then a big misconception as far as, you know, what wax or what board holds wax better. Um, uh, everyone has sort of thought centered. It's like all these little balls that are basically pressed together and there's pores between them that allow the wax to go into the pores. And this is a great little demonstration is, so I think a lot of people think about centered base like this. This is a candle. This is a candle. Um, where, you know, in between the little balls, that's where the wax goes. So that's not actually the case. And it's more so all those little pieces of powder are, they're tiny little grains that are smashed together. And it has a super uneven surface. And when you wax your board, the wax is actually adhering to that uneven surface. So it's like, you know, with an extruded base, it's like putting wax on top of glass. There's nothing to bond to it. But on a microscopic level, the wax will adhere to those little imperfections on, on a centered base. So oh, the wax yeah. stays on the board longer and ba- it molds to it better, forms to it better. Yeah, because actually like, on a super, super microscopic level, it has something to bond to. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And so that's where a lot there's a big misconception that the wax is seeping into the base. But if you think about it, if wax can seep into the base, why wouldn't water? And then all of a sudden your board would just be waterlogged. So it sits on top. So, you know, people say like, oh, if you just do like a thousand coats of wax, it's just going to like seep in there and your board's going to be great forever. But that's not really the case. Really? Yeah. Well, wow. so okay. it's layering it, it, getting yeah, kind of a different getting a so why you want to do like hot boxing or a lot of layers of wax is you're melting the wax and allowing it to flow better. So it can maybe get into those little crack, those crevices yeah. and the imperfections in the surface of the material to bond better. But it's not actually absorbing through the base material. Mm. And that's a big misconception. I think a lot of people are like, oh yeah, it's like the pores of your skin or like like Gore-Tex, but Mm -hmm. not the case. It's like multiple coats of paint. And so just generally speaking, without, you know, factoring in wax, your center is just going to be faster. So, well, so that's a great point. So because of that like micro surface texture of the center that allows the wax to adhere to it, if you don't wax it, that basically becomes sandpaper. So an unwaxed sintered base is slower than an unwaxed extruded base. So that's why people say sintered bases are, you have to maintain them way more. That's because you have to wax them more. It's going to end up being slower. This is wildly informative. I've been snowboarding <laughs> yeah. my whole life. I'm just learning <laughs> yeah. it now. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. So, it, it, like, so that's been my problem my whole career. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it's important to wax if you have a nice base. Like it, you're going to benefit a lot. How from often it. you wax? Uh, I mean, I ride, like, I'm always riding so many prototypes. So it's like I get boards of factory waxes on them. I would probably ride them like two or three days and then I'm onto another board. Uh, if I stick with one board, I try to wax it every like three times I go for like, yeah, I think that's a good solid average for people listening. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. If you're like a weekend warrior, I bet if you wax, if you could wax twice a month, but once a month, if you're getting out two days a week. It also depends yeah. like in the spring, like the wax is going to come off immediately. Yeah. You yeah. know, February cold temps, you might hold up a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And then yeah. we can get into structure a little bit. Yeah. Too. Let's talk structure. Yeah. Cause that's a, that's a super important one for people out there. Um, 
So if you flip a base over and you see kind of like these micro scratches that are, it's, it'll usually be a really uniform pattern on the bottom. That's there to break up the surface tension. Cause when you're riding across snow, you're basically melting a little film of water between the snow and your base. And that's what you're riding on. And those little, it's like the golf ball dimple type thing. It breaks up the surface tension of that water to allow you to glide. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have those, you're going to suck to the snow more. So that's like in the springtime, you notice how grabby the snow is. Cause when you hit like a really wet spot, it's exactly like pooling under your base kind of, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's just suction cupping your base to the snow and, and the structure really helps it. So in the springtime, you, it's best to get a deeper structure put into your base. So it prevents that suction cup effect. Is, it, is that why golf, why, why golf balls have that? Yeah. Yeah. It's break up like turbulent flow. Yeah. Oh, we're getting a turbulent yeah, flow now. You hear that? Flow. Well, it gives it more <laughs> of a or, or, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like it laminar versus ter- yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. the other thing boundary that, layers that's stuff. fascinating that. too, which yeah, I didn't stop know, is that when you guys go into board design, like I found this out yesterday, that you have like uh, like these math equations that take up an entire fucking whiteboard, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so like for designing, uh, we won't get too too deep into it, but uh, you can look up what's called parallel axis theorem. That's how we design core profiles and core stiffnesses of boards. So it's like this crazy huge math equation that takes into your fiberglass and everything that goes into the board. And that helps you determine what the flex of the board is going to be. Damn. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Well, talking about camber profiles, I mean, there's always a conversation on rocker or camber. Obviously, like Skate Banana came out, I mean, a while ago now. But like, you know, rocker was just raging for like 10 years. Now I see a lot of flat kind of hybrid camber and then maybe a little reverse under the feet or flat. Um, yeah, maybe break down the difference and the pros and cons of each. Yeah, for sure. I mean, nowadays, uh, I think probably 90% of the boards out there are hybrid. And so we'll get into why you want a hybrid. So, but starting with rocker rocker was a great discovery because all the original snowboards were full camber, just absolute beasts of boards. What's what we all learned on and the amount of times you would just aggressively scorp and hook your edge because of how much camber the board had. It sucked to learn on and it was super hard to ride. And then when they introduced rocker, basically it takes all the pressure off of the contact points of the board and it it makes it a saucer. And so you aren't going to hook your edge. You can link your turns way easier, but then once you start going a little bit faster, you can't control your edge as much. You lose pop in the board. So that's where, uh, you know, We've taken, you have camber, which is, you know, you get a lot of edge hold, pop, control the board. And then now we have rocker, which makes it easier to snowboard. You're combining the two. And that's why we have a million different hybrid cambers. But the goal with hybrid camber is you want to make a board that has good edge hold, good pop, but is easy to ride. So that's, you're just trying to balance the, it's the best of both worlds. And pretty much that's what, you know, all of us ride today is some sort of hybrid. There's very few full camber boards. And I mean, there are rock full rocker boards out there today, but yeah, mostly things have kind of melded back out where it's like flat with a little bit of rocker or camber to rocker. Um, but yeah, everyone does their own take on it, whether they start the rocker right outside the bindings. And so it's super loose in the tips and the tails, or there's a lot more camber going out towards the contact point with a little bit of rocker. There's a lot of ways you can spin it and kind of understanding what you're getting uh, with each design, like actually going to a shop and physically looking at a board will tell you a lot about how it's going to ride. Mm. That's an, that kind of is a good segue into an interesting topic because if you're the consumer of a snowboard and you go online and you're like, I want to buy a new board, there's a lot of, I see a lot of people doing YouTube reviews of boards, right? Yeah. And there's, it seems to me that there are some that are credible and that there are some that are not credible or maybe in my opinion, don't seem to be credible. What uh, do you do? You know, you know, for for the consumer that's maybe watching YouTube reviews, or um, do you know who the credible ones are for for people that are thinking about getting a board? Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, for me personally, when I'm if I go on and watch people's reviews who are doing snowboard uh, snowboard reviews, I want to see them riding. You know, because I think that tells a lot about. Uh, you know, if you can watch them linking turns and they're comparing two boards that you might be interested, you can see the differences within that. So I think making sure you're watching reviews where people are actually snowboarding on the product is super important. Uh, there's Board Archive, which is uh, yep. a really rad one. TJ. Yep. Yep. And yep. then uh, Snowboard Pro Camp is also yep. another rad one. Um, yeah, uh, a few others. Um, oh, I'm blanking on a name. Guy out of Bend, Oregon, who, who does some. But yeah, there's good ones out there. And I think... Uh, 
you know, with with watching Snowbird reviews as a customer, don't just take one person's review and be like, that's the be all end all because a lot of people have preferences. Like Nils likes really stiff snowboards. Not everyone likes a really stiff snowboard. You like like medium stiff pow boards, you know, and that's different from maybe how, what Hale likes for riding pow. So it's, I think, yeah, it's, it's hard because as a consumer, you're like watching all these like, okay, this guy said it's this, it that's the be all end all, but you maybe need to take in consideration their preferences and hopefully they're a good reviewer saying, Hey, it's a little too soft for me, but I just like stiff boards. So it's, you know, I think, yeah, it's hard, but there's some good ones out there and it's important. Totally. And it's something to think about too. I've been testing a ton of boards and you know, you, I might get a board and I might read the sheet about the board and it might say, it's like for exactly the type of riding I want. I bop it on the carpet with a couple flexes and I'm like, I'm so hyped to ride this. And then I throw it down on snow and I'm like, oh, this isn't the board that I wanted it to be. Yeah. And it seems like on snow demos are great. Like if you're going to go, if you want to get a snowboard, like you can read all the specs you want, but nothing beats throwing it under your feet and actually seeing how it rides. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, in today's day and age, there's so many more on snow demos than ever before. Brands are doing demos at resorts all around the U.S. at least. And that for consumers who want to try a couple boards in a day that is the best thing that you can possibly do it's so important and that's i mean how like when i'm designing boards i try so many different boards out to have an understanding of you know how every brand's boards are riding and so i can bet i can make product better for the consumer you can catch stoon on any pow day testing at brighton flying off of cliffs pretty much oh, yeah. <laughs> doing some <laughs> tweak and, uh, a little tweak and twe- <laughs> test <laughs> Tweak and tweak, test. Tweak and test. He gets more. He probably gets more days on snow than hailstorm over here. <laughs> probably. You go up to Brighton, guarantee you see you. <laughs> oh up yeah. There. This is an interesting topic too. Wide, wide versus like narrow boards. I'm a size ten. Yeah. And I'm kind of in this weird area yeah, where I have, to, I have toe drag on some boards. Yeah. And on money, I, I ride a wide sometimes. Yeah. I'd love to get a professional's opinion on the wide versus not wide. Yeah. So I think the cutoff is really like a size eleven boot. So if we're talking like a traditional board, because nowadays there's so many shapes out there, it's crazy. Like there's endless amount of different widths and everything. But if we're talking about like traditional width, free ride boards or park boards, about an 11 is kind of your cutoff point for needing a wide. And that's going to be a board that has like around a, a 256 to 258 millimeter waist width. So that's a good one for people who, if they have a 11 or 12, they can check a board out and be like, okay, it's a 260. I'm probably going to be great on this board at the size 11 or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think also, you know, even if you do have an 11 foot, you got to look at your riding specifically. Um, like, so say, you know, like if you are an 11 foot and you don't really like to try and lay trenches when you're out carving, like that's not your thing. You're just in the park or you're just cruising through the trees. You don't necessarily need a wide. It's only if your riding style maybe is like, I really like carving and I have problems with toe drag. So now I want a wide board because of that. So it's. You know, when you get up into like a size 12, it's pretty much no brainer. You need a wide, but I think for the people who are on the cusp, just take a look at your riding style. Like if I'm really trying to like get low on cars and do that sort of riding, yeah, wide's probably better for you. But if you want the nimbleness of the narrow board. That's the thing I think that's important for, you know, listeners too. It's like I get wide boards and test them sometimes and like going toe to heel edge it's like feels like I'm trying to get a fucking four by eight sheet of plywood up on edge, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, straight up. Like that's the thing. It's yeah, like, yeah. oh, I got a wide foot. I want toe and heel drag. Well, sometimes you get that wide and you go to arc a turn and you're like, come on, get on edge, get on edge. Yeah, like, yeah. Compromise. You're, oh, you're yeah. sacrificing for sure. Yeah. So that's that's. Does your some... Solomon do that? Because my, my wide is pretty easy. Honestly, all, any Solomon <laughs> wide or narrow uh, I've been on, and it doesn't matter. Well, I'm actually in, referring yeah. specifically to Solomon. The Capitas, I do not have an issue with this. Yeah, no. actually, again, past tense. Yeah, this yeah. is a past tense problem. Yeah. K2s, I've had a hard time K2s, with K2s. I've heard of the yeah. absolute yeah. worst when it comes yeah. out of yeah. K2s are just really no problem with everyone. train wreck. <laughs> no problem with the toe and heel edge performance on K2, let me tell you. But I think that's but, important right. information for yeah, people yeah. to know. 100%. Yeah, it's so I think, yeah, just... Uh, understand like you know going with a wide board you're sac- you you might get better fa- float and powder you know you're less toe and heel drag but you're sacrificing some nimbleness and performance with the board mm. i got do you have another question no go ahead yeah. Too? Yeah. i want to get your take as well on um pow board specifically okay and like the maybe growing or current popularity of the extremely set back 
very directional pal board. Yeah. Um, because I have a, a bias against that that I could get into, but I'd be curious to get your two cents onto it as well. You, you guys kind of know the style of boards I, I've, I'm talking about. I've been about. riding a directional pow board all season, and but, I love. You but know, like set way back. some that that just have like almost no tail, and like aesthetically, you see a lot going on, and, it, and maybe I'm just like old heading in a way about this. No, but is this something that you guys have noticed at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely. I mean, with we're in the day and age of quivers and snowboarding. Like people used to have one snowboard, and now people have three snowboards who are con- just like a, you know, even a weekend warrior because you, you know, and those types of boards are, it's for that like super special pow day, you know, when it's just like really deep. And, and I think maybe your riding style wouldn't really be great for that type of board. Like if you were like going to bald face, you're like I'm not jumping off anything. I'm only going to ride powder. You'd have an insane time on a board like that. He wouldn't, he rode bald face switch the whole time we were there. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> He's like, it's, it's just, <laughs> It's a training. <laughs> He's like, it's just too <laughs> flat no, for no, me. No, I'm t- totally serious. <laughs> yeah. Every run. Yeah, 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 keep going. It, um, but no, I mean, those, those boards, like if you get one of those super directional pow boards and you have a good powder day on it, it's like nothing else you've ever ridden. You can lean forward on them and you're no not going to... back t- leg burn. Yeah, it's so fun. And like, they're so like whippy through the trees. It's like effortless in powder, but they're very one dimensional. Like you can barely ride switch on them, you know. So that's where that's where quivers are now a thing in snowboarding. Uh, What's your take, Nils? Yeah, I just had a hard time like looping out on them. Like yeah, even on, oh yeah. I there's... like and then granted maybe that's just how I've learned how to ride pound. I think it's different for everyone too. Your like technique to doing it. Um, but I spend like so much time on my back foot. I mean that's just because I actually haven't ridden a very robust directional <laughs> board. But um, yeah, I'm just like dang, no tail. I would like. I've looped out when I don't even have as much as I want. I think also, Nils, you got to realize the way you're riding the mountain is not how I've a had fucking chill consumer runs. is like you're fucking I've had chill sending. runs. <laughs> you need a big ass board that can land. You're catching fucking air. You know, I feel like that. That's a factor. Like if you're just wiggling, if you're just wiggling yeah. in a power run, like who needs a fucking tail? Yeah, it's like it's like yeah. your first run on Millie. You're going T to B under the lift. You want just that huge nose, tiny tail, and you're just wiggling your ass all the way down, having literally the best time ever. <laughs> yeah. Happy dog it is, tail. They're yeah. so happy dog butt. They're the so down. fun. It's <laughs> yeah, they're crazy. But yeah, I mean, you're not gonna like go drop a bunch of cliffs on that type of board or like trying to hit jumps on it. It's just that's not what I guess that person buying that board probably hopefully understands that. It's made for good powder or carving, like those super wide boards that with a short tail are fun for carving mm-hmm. too. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Ah. Your input. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks yeah. for the segue. I like that. This is a fun topic. Hey, what? I got a question for you, real quick. Yeah. Um, earlier, you mentioned something about faux tech. Yeah. I was wondering if you had any examples of what faux tech might look like or sound like, or maybe some buzzwords. And maybe stuff that's a little gimmicky, people might want to avoid. I like that, Silk. Great question. For the consumer. For the consumer. Great question, Silk. Watch what you say for future jobs. Uh, (laughs) It all comes back to haunt you. Welcome to the hot seat. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta tread lightly on this one. But you know, there's like a lot of companies who do tons of you know for base materials. We were just talking about that. Who do tons of crazy tech with base materials? They're throwing all these like gallium titanium particle infused base materials and a lot of it actually like there's no proof there's no studies that's actually making the base more durable or uh you know if it's if they're saying like you know you put carbon in a base uh which we talked about like, yesterday and carbon is an anti-static so it's like snow has static in it so carbon will actually dissipate static on your board makes you go faster but all these other things that companies can put into the base it's literally bullshit I mean, straight up. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, like edge tech stuff is interesting. Like there, there was a, you can, you can go on YouTube and search um, these videos, but like looking at like different types of edge tech and what actually matters, there was a shop in the Midwest that literally rode like 20 different brands of boards on an ice rink and to, to test edge techs. And basically the conclusion of it was if you have a really sharp edge, that's all that matters. Oh, no way. Yeah. So, so it's just kind of crazy. It's yeah. like, that's interesting. They're like, all right, well, like maybe it works in certain conditions. Like, I mean, I don't ride on the East Coast, so I don't like, there's not no such thing as ice at Brighton. You know, you grew up on the East Coast, so you know what actual ice is. So I think in certain conditions or certain snow types, I think those edge techs can totally work. But it was just an interesting little like, eh, actually just a sharp edge is really like what's going to 
lock you into a turn. Well, talking edges, I mean, and edge bevels, that's also an interesting topic. Yeah, yeah, and that's a a lot of, that's like the unsung hero of a lot of how boards ride that people don't know about is, so when boards are coming out of the factory, the edges aren't perfectly flat, like flush with the base material. They're actually beveled upwards ever so slightly, and that just makes the board a little bit more forgiving. And so this this is a newer thing, Um, you know, boards from the 90s definitely didn't have this, and that's why you're you know, with the camber, you're hooking your edge so bad because those edges are so aggressive. But by beveling the edges up, it kind of gives you a little bit of that, like, uh, forgiveness of your board. And especially if you're riding rails, if, like, you know, I, there was always the rumor going around that Lewiff never detuned oh, yeah, his edges. Did. I've seen it. So yeah. all the Solomon boards come with a two-degree bevel. Um, like, K2 boards, all they all come with a 1.5-degree bevel. So your edge is lifted up. So when you're going through a kink, it actually shouldn't catch or it shouldn't catch on a rail just because it's lifted up ever so slightly. So I think that's why Lewis did it. Kind of crazy. You detune, Zach? Zach? I don't I don't really detune that much, honestly. Yeah. Like, I kind of just run them just Yeah. I mean yeah. it depends. Like if I like pull a brand new board out, not a spot that's like a kink rail or something, I'm like, I'll take a I'll take a bit of it off, but I never like round my edge round my edges. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I, on Blue's uh, podcast, he talked about this, like, dude, we spend a million dollars, like millions of dollars on these machines to make edge bevels, and then people just go and rip a file to them. You know, it's like we're putting those edge bevels to make the boards more forgiving so you don't have to take a file to mm-hmm. them, and that's it's super important. And, yeah, like you can mix different degrees for different styles of boards, you know, more for freestyle boards, less for all-mountain boards, but – yeah, it's a cool one. It's super interesting. And then that also brings us into kind of a side cuts conversation too. And I think this is interesting for our listeners too, because you might get on a board that has a an aggressive side cut, a really deep, you know, sea of a side cut, and you're ripping groomers and it's awesome. It's like gr- it's railing your uh, you go to do a toe side turn, it just rails, heel side turns, rails, but then that same board, if you're going off of a jump or like you're going into a rail, that thing might kind of zing you. A little more than you want, right? Yeah, so yeah. I, I prefer something that's a little bit more, like, not so aggressive where it's more predictable for side cuts. For sure. Yeah, and so there, I mean, this is a huge, oh, yeah, go ahead if you have a question. Can you, talk about side cuts, can you blend in uh, contact points, too? Because I feel like those sort of work with each other. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, effective edges kind of go hand in hand with that, and we'll get into that. Um, so that, I guess, like, basic types of side cuts. Um, so you have radius, like a, which is just part of a circle so it's a single radius you can have dual radius so like the front half of the board has a different radius than the back half you see that more on directional boards uh you can get tri-radial so three different radii or quadratic which is if you remember from school like the y equals x squared that's a quadratic equation and that's where quadratic comes from not for side cuts um so there's so much that goes into that and with a quadratic side cut you can change the angles and make it like a really mellow side cut out in the tip and the tail. So then say when you're pressuring to go off a jump, the board's going to track straighter, but you can do a deeper side cut between your feet. And then when you do get it up on edge, it actually has that more like whippy fun turn. So there's ways to blend different types of radii or side cuts to kind of get sort of the best of both worlds on what you're doing. But back to what you were saying, like, yeah, there's those boards that are really fun for carving whipping turns back and forth but as soon as you're going really fast and you put a little edge pressure it's going to want to turn and that's when you're going to start hooking off jumps so that's where you see a lot of like you know park boards they have bigger side cuts or pipe boards with bigger side cuts because you want to have a really predictable line I mean, you look at like a, I don't know if you've ever seen like a border cross board, but they almost just look straight. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 yeah, It's kind of, and that's, and so if you think about like, think about like a snapshot of somebody in a turn, their board is bent into like a rocker shape. And so, you know, so many people get hung up on like what the side cut radius is, but the flex of the board actually also has so much to do with it because a softer board, you're going to be able to flex the board more through a turn. And that's going to bend your side cut more and create a tighter turn. So there's there's so much that goes into it. Um, but yeah, that's like those the the effective edge on those race boards. They have crazy long effective edges, softer boards with no side cut, so they can bend the hell out of the board and create the turn. Wow. Yeah. It's what aspect? Nuts. What aspect of the side cut is the effective edge exactly? Yeah. So that's that's, that's a good question. No, from great question from uh, wide point to wide point. So wide point of the nose to wide point of the tail. And then running surface is 
So if you lay a board on a table, it's where the board basically comes in contact with the table. So that'll always be less than the effective edge. Because if you have your camber going past your contact points, you're just going to die. Hook. Yeah. Yeah, an example of a bad uh, job is the swallowtail up here. You'll notice I cut the, <laughs> I cut the nose before the past the effect past the effective edge. You don't want to do that. I didn't know much about tech when I cut yeah. that thing. Rides horribly. But damn, was it a good vision? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yo, uh, jigsaw. Uh, I think so. I don't remember. It's damn near freaking fifteen years ago now, or something like that. So good. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is all really interesting stuff. Let's get into uh, some questions from... This is from James Reynolds from Instagram. Uh, he asks, what inspires a new board design? Just feedback from the team or something else? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there's definitely a few... I mean, it's all kind of situational, like whether within the K2 line we need to sort of fill a gap of like a certain board... that that we need in the line that other brands have that we don't, or it's going out and just riding a lot with team riders and we're testing all these different boards. And, you know, Parker maybe is like, Hey, what about this board with more taper and this, you know, a little more side cut, we make the board, go test it. Oh, wow. Like this thing's sick. Perfect. We just discovered a new board for the line. So it can happen super organically like that, or you can sort of chase after like, okay, we need a new high end park board. Um, you know, let's start, like you kind of set some design parameters and kind of start ripping out prototypes and go from there. What's your, of all the boards you designed, let's just say maybe just for K2 specifically, do you have one that you're the most proud of that you're like, this thing's fucking awesome? Yeah, for sure. That was, it was the first board I designed for K2 actually. It's kind of crazy. It's called the Alchemist and it's like a directional high end free ride board. Definitely made for someone who's more like looking for like hard charging, like snowbird style rider. Um, but that one was really cool because it was basically just no limit on what you can do or try like full rain, go for it, try all the craziest tech, do whatever you want. And K2 said to you, yeah, yeah, that's what K2 said to me. It was like, there was no limits. It was like design the best free ride board you possibly can with the craziest tech you can that actually works in the board. And yeah, it turned out insane. Like I was shocked that i mean i i liked how it rode but i didn't know how it, the public would perceive it and uh people is, loved it is so that, is that the one sage colonel cots rides yeah, yeah that's mm-hmm. what he's riding. Colonel K? He, he rides like a lot of big mountain stuff on that but, like won numerous awards too was your, i like, see a final. lot of people on that board yeah it's pretty it's pretty crazy it's a lot of fun and i think it's and it also uh you don't have to be really good at snowboarding to ride it like you can be like that solid intermediate up snowboarder to be on it but you just need to know you want a stiff board Mm -hmm. you know at the end of the day like that's the most important thing it's like going into a shop or talking with someone at a shop and figuring out what you want out of the snowboard because it's not for everybody you know Mm -hmm. like you might not like it because you like a more mid stiff power board or like all mountain board totally yeah i mean this is an interesting one again going back to picking people's brains about like people you have i'm genuinely interested because my theory lately i stood on blake paul's board a while ago Oh yeah, and he. I was blown away because I'm. Granted, he is like bird bones. The guy weighs I don't know a buck ten, soaking wet. It seems like, <laughs> but you watch him. You watch. I mean, we've all seen Prodi ride. It, it's fucking insane. He's unbelievable on a snowboard, and I strapped into this thing, and it, it's like it's a GNU board. It was way softer than I. It was big and soft. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, wait a second. I've been on, you know, coming from school of like stiff cambered stomp attack the mountain yep for and i'm sure. like wait a second there's this new what about big soft yeah, and yeah. so i i started switching around <laughs> big soft. I'm, on, I'm on a big soft tip when it comes to riding like powder and and more all mountain so where i size up where underneath me it's it's like really you know i got a lot underneath me so the the loop out factor is not there but it's nimble because it's got torsional flex yeah and you can move around on it and i've been riding the the capita navigator it's a directional yeah, board, yeah. but it's, it's softer than i thought i would even like but I fucking love it. Yeah, exactly. And that's so for people who are looking to maybe size up or size down on a board, you have to look at what the flex of the or like the characteristics of the board are. Because if you took that same, say, 162, but you put it into a super stiff version, you would you wouldn't like it. Mm -hmm. But you knew it was a soft board um, and you sized up and it's perfect for you. Or you can take, say, a model that is a little on the stiffer side, size down a hair and you're and then it's a little bit more flexible and can be super fun for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, it's going back to like how Blake rides. Like you, have you ridden his board before? I haven't uh, ridden. I just strapped in. Him yeah. We, we've, line. we've switched boards before and I hadn't ridden his board and 
how he snowboards is how that board rides, if that makes sense. Like his like little pivoty check turns, the camber profile, because it's rocker between the feet, it kind of gives you this like crazy pivot point. And so I, I'm always curious, like I thought, like I wonder if he would snowboard a little differently if he hadn't been riding that board for the past like 10 years, because it just suits his like, Going I don't know, technique it. yeah. so well. It, it's, it was really cool, but yeah. Was, what board, Nils, what do you, what board do you ride? What's it all about? I'm a little all over the place. I would say <laughs> my daily driver, um, around Brighton or something like that is the high path. Um, and that again is like this newer, more all mountain board that Solomon came out with. And it actually is softer than what I've ridden in the past. Um, and for some stuff, it doesn't really fit the right need. Like if I was to do like a free world tour contest again, I would get on this like discontinued piece of plywood that I still get graphics put on. <laughs> so, um, but essentially, yeah, the, the high path. And then if I'm like carving around the resort, there's like, um, a slightly stiffer and snappier, but smaller board. So it's better at turning called the super eight and I'll spend a bunch of time on that. And then of course there's the huck knife for the park and I'm, I'm sort of, you were talking about like the softer, softer aspect. And for the longest time, cause I, I have a half pipe background for the longest time. I was just always trying to have the stiffest board boots and bindings. Cause I liked how like responsive everything was. And then a lot of, of the riding I've been doing recently, like the stuff in space cadet with pillow lines and like, you know, natural selection contests and then just Brighton pow days, um, requires a lot more of that proddy feel. And like you designed a, a board with Sage sort of around this aspect that you kind of have a, a board of course that can ride in pow, but it's not as stiff as like a half pipe board might be for me. And, and a huge benefit of that is having something that I can kind of maneuver under my feet quicker because like if you're in pow too, like there's like snow going over your board, like you're not on like hard pack snow and th there's like more resistance going around you. You're like treading water in a way, you know? So having something that is more nimble, um, makes it easier. I like it. Uh, you're, what do you, you're a huck knife guy. Yeah, I've been riding the Huck Knife Pro. I That's like that a good board. I also rode the Assassin Pro a lot this last year in the POW. How'd you I, like that thing? I loved it. Yeah. I mean, like, I I mean, I mean, rode it in Japan. I rode it in Whistler. I rode it. I, I, I like that board for everything. I Like, I rode the resort, too, like Park, and it was fine. Like, You're on a 62 it. or 59? 59. Cool. Yeah. And then 60, what's your park? The, board, the board's pretty stiff, so, like, a 62 is, like. That's a hog. It's a hog. I mean, but the 59, like, I kind of just rode it on everything, and then. It's funny. I even rode the '59 Huck Knife Pro on a couple street spots. Damn this year sick. sick! Big back like, twos. <laughs> yeah. That's a big. I, back I mean, it's just like I found the 92 board. 92 stair <laughs> gap rail. <laughs> <laughs> the rail back two. <laughs> no, the Huck Knife Pro is like a good all around board too. I think. I mean, I love Solid that snowboard. Hard board. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this is um, also in the product tech talk department. It's a little bit of a curveball of a question from Jack Daw. He wants to know why is Jay Stone so scared of Hurricane <laughs> Hillary? God damn it! Tech. Jack. Yeah, this is kind of a tech question. More of an infrastructure oh, question. Oh god! All right, let's go down this. <laughs> what was yeah? Give, give us give us a little, give us the tech yeah, on the context. Go. Con context is uh, so it was a big group of us going down to Mexico for Trevor Brady's bachelor party. He just got married uh, a couple weeks ago. Cook. Yeah, oh, he's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, it was a big group of us going down there. Uh, a couple days before the trip, um, there was a, a hurricane that formed out in the Pacific. And uh, we were all kind of like, ooh, this thing could, you know, maybe it's sort of getting it, going to be close to land. I don't know. As the days get closer to the trip, uh, the hurricane turns into a Category 5. And so everyone flies into San Diego. And, you know, uh, we got a, we had a solid crew of people. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like... Jeff Richards, Kale Zima, Sam Taxwood, Jack Stevens, bunch bunch of homies. Right? All-star right. crew. Yeah, Jack Daw, and Mo Jannings as well. Big shout out to Mo. Um, and basically, I'm tripping on this thing. Like this is a this is a Category Five hurricane that's <laughs> literally rolling straight over the Airbnb. Like the cat, <laughs> like the category, the, the hurricane. Straight for us. No, we're talking the hurricane tracker is like like going over the town that the airbnb is in and i'm and i've been to that area of mexico if you haven't been there before in baja it's just basically dirt hills with some houses put in like into the hillside every now and again so if there's they were predicting five inches of rain an hour 
and when the storm would hit and so it was like i'm like dude this is gonna be like crazy ass floods i don't know if i want to go down there Landslide. every everybody else was like nah we're going we're going <laughs> storm chasers baja edition <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm just like all right uh i'm gonna chill in california and then i'll eventually meet up with you guys and uh, so, you know, the day of the storm, all those dudes at the Airbnb were basically like, we're drinking out the storm. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're making it through. And, uh, so basically they, everybody proceeds to pretty much black out throughout the day, <laughs> which is a great decision when a hurricane is coming directly towards you. You got your wits about you. Uh, you would never have to, eva- no one's ever had to evacuate yeah, yeah, in never. the center of a category for yeah. a hurricane, you know? Yeah, I'm just thinking it's like the classic situation of like, those dudes are ending up on the roof, helicopters picking them up, and everything's <laughs> flooding around them, you know? And I, so I'm texting them throughout the day, and they're like, yeah, it's all good, storm's not that bad. And so I'm like, all right, I might just walk across the border and Uber to where they are and then all of a sudden i start getting texts like oh shit's getting real here their house starts flooding (laughs) so everybody's just fucking wasted literally walking in water in the house the water's pouring underneath the door (laughs) something about an open window upstairs oh yeah and and then water starts leaking through the ceiling turns out sam forgets to close all of his windows upstairs (laughs) (laughs) during a hurricane (laughs) And so just water's just pouring into the upstairs during the hurricane, flooding <laughs> through the roof into the house. And it's just absolute Something mayhem. Something like Hefe cooking uh, butt naked. Uh, in the yeah, and then, and then, yeah, like look over and, and yeah, Hefe is just cooking a quesadilla butt naked in the middle of all this black <laughs> oil. Hopefully the Airbnb owners don't listen to this. <laughs> Hopefully that's not one of Hailstorm's properties from his uh, <laughs> venture. Yeah, but uh, yeah, made it down there the next day. It was all good. Had an insane bachelor party. It was sick. But hey, respect to those dudes. They they uh, they well, did it up. So the reason Jack, why Jack you were scared is because you didn't want to die. Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay. But it turns out I ended up getting caught in a hurricane two weeks later. So joke's on me. <laughs> did you guys catch any waves? Yeah, it was sick. Yeah, we like caught post hurricane swell, and it was so fun. Who's the best surfer in that crew? And who thinks they're the best surfer mm, in that That's crew? a great question. Mm. That was a great question. Well, is it Griffin Siebert there? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Griffin, yeah, Griffin. Those actually, are two different things most of the time. Griffin, uh, <laughs> Griffin bailed on the trip because of the hurricane and then uh, ended up getting COVID uh, uh, <laughs> a week later. Classic, <laughs> classic. Or a day later. Classic yeah. scenario. Um, I'd say Jack Daw, definitely the best surfer. Um, and then, AKA the Wep. He's AKA like good at everything. It's yeah, so yeah. annoying. Yeah. He's just a New England athlete. He's just a, he's just a main guy. It's like, yeah. oh, let's play pickleball. Well, okay, I'm going to smoke you at that. Kickball that, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to kick this over the fence. Let's, de- <laughs> let's, let's debate. I'll whip your ass on that. Yeah. Debate is actually he's the, the best skill. He accelerates yeah. 100%. Yeah. Let's roast somebody. Okay, they're done. They're yeah. best. <laughs> Who thinks put, they're the put, best? Uh, I mean, I'm going to have to say... Probably me because I <laughs> surf the most out of everybody. So I, in my head, I want to be good at surfing, but I suck. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. What about Bow and Bag and Lefts like an absolute Landa? Oh, dude, <laughs> absolute Landa out there. He's yeah. just like always looking clean. All right, we're going to tee up one last uh, question for product stuff before we move on. This is from our Patreon member, Sarah Constantine. She asks, well, if you're having a board engineer on, maybe he can answer a question from last time. What's the difference between men's, women's, and children's boards? And what are the challenges of making boards unisex? Also, are there any successful unisex boards on the market right now? Love it. That's a really good question. Uh, let's see. We'll we'll start with the unisex part of it first, and that maybe will like kind of answer the, the men's versus women stuff. Um, so obviously, um, you know, like on average, a guy and a girl who are the same height, the guy is going to weigh more. And he's also gonna have a bigger foot. So I would say those are inherently the the f- biggest challenges with designing a unisex board. Um, but when you're when you're looking at sizing a board for somebody, uh, the first thing you want to look at is the weight of the rider. And so with designing unisex boards, you think uh, you know, for example, a girl who's say five eleven weighs one hundred and forty pounds, and then you take a a guy who's five eight weighs 140 pounds or five, nine weighs 140 pounds. They're probably going to be on the same board because of their weight. And the girl might have a similar size foot than him just because she's taller. So those are sort of the initial things that you look at. It's, it's really making sure you as the person are getting the right size board for how much you weigh and your, 
foot size. So when you're designing in a unisex board, uh, it definitely gets tricky around those, say, 150 centimeter range because that's kind of like the typical like transition size between like a men's size and a women's size. Um, so you got to definitely pay more close attention to how the waist width scale, uh, how effective edges scale, and how flexes scale. Um, and a, lot, a big part of that is getting the right flex board for the style of riding you want to do. So you know if you're like if you're looking at unisex boards and there's you know an eight out of ten, a six out of ten, and a four out of ten stiffness, you need to understand what you're trying to get out of the board and the, the style of riding. So yeah, there's there's no like when I design a women's board, it is I do these exact specific things, and when I do a men's board, I do these exact specific things. Um, it's the lines are much more blurred, and that's why I think unisex boards actually work really well. Um, so yeah, there's it's you know it's becoming way more of a common thing that you're seeing today. Um, I think originally uh, men's and women's delineation started just because of graphics. Like I think that was the original thing because if you look at if you look at skateboarding or surfing, there's not a women's or men's like specific board for surfing or skateboarding. You know, it's just a model, which I think should be how snowboarding is and. So, you know, like we were talking earlier, there's narrower boards and there's wider boards. So you as the consumer just needs to, okay, I, you know, I'm looking at all these unisex boards. This model is a narrower model than this one. And I have a small foot and they're the same flex. I probably want to go with the narrower one. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much like how unisex boards come to be. Um, so definitely try to pay a lot of attention, making sure that it's going to fit a wide range of consumers and then having enough product offerings that you're going to meet consumer needs um as pretty much how it goes and so hopefully that explains like i guess like the the overall concept and men's and women's differences um so it's really comes down to yeah, like waist widths flex patterns for the style of riding that you want to do so and i know a lot of girls who ride snowbird who ride stiff men's boards because you know a lot of times they haven't been able to find women's boards that are stiff enough for them so it's pretty cool but now we're so like at least for k2 specifically like our whole landscape collection is all unisex and there's like so the the most popular ones are the passport and the excavator to answer the last part of her question um and those ones are like equally loved by guys and girls so there's there's a lot of really good stuff out there rad yeah that's awesome that's a good direction to go i like hearing about that um let's get into uh, a quick uh ig patreon questions and then we're gonna get into uh a catch up about the ride video with jill perkins uh, reed and also spencer schubert but uh, before we get into that let's talk about this question from bo brown he wants to know would you rather snowboard on a 300 foot rope toe the rest of your life or ride anywhere in the world but you have to ski the rest of your life. Zach? I'm going to go rope, to, rope toe. I'm rope toe. <laughs> Jason? Rope toe, without a doubt. Mission Nails? Ridge rope toe, incredible. Yeah. Like just a rope toe, and you can't yep. go down. <laughs> Are we talking rails on a rope toe? Nils, be honest. <sighs> I, Dude, I'd ski. Ooh. <laughs> I like the, I'm a mountain. <laughs> Credibility. Ooh, I'm a mountain. Sell. 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 I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sell, sell. Sell. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, but I'm a, I'm a mountain athlete. I'm a mountain guy. You're a mountain Ooh. athlete. I'm a mountain athlete. I'm a mountain guy. My name's Nils. I'm a mountain athlete. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to tell you, Chris. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 That's at my core. That should be your Instagram I like bio. Oh I like pal. I'm not going to give up pal. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind hiking. Uh, I enjoy the mountains. Good luck with your career. <laughs> Silk, what you got? Oh, I'm going rope toe. Yeah, right. Of course, <laughs> everyone goes sure, rope toe. Sure. And again, Nils, <laughs> that is the wrong answer. All right, Sticking we're getting to my guns here. We're going to uh, catch up with uh, Jill and the ride crew about Rated R. All right, we are here in studio with the ride crew. Uh, we're here to talk about Rated R, their newest video that just came out. We got Jill Perkins. Reed Smith and Spencer Schubert in studio. How we Hello. doing, gang? What's going on? Hi. We're Yee. doing great, Chris. How are you? How, how's everybody feeling after the big premiere, big night out? Beat up. Black, <laughs> blacked out. <laughs> not, not like that, but... Reed was crowd surfing for like a solid minute. <laughs> Have you done that before, Reed? No, that was a first. Yeah, that was awesome. That was, that was super fun. Respect. Well, before we get into the pre premiere night, uh, maybe, Spencer, you want to tee up uh, what the concept was behind the ride video Rated R? Yeah, sure. 
So last year, we came out with Rough Around the Edges, which was a 30-year documentary and book of just the whole history of Ride. And after that came out, they're like, well, we have a pretty awesome team, and we just want to showcase that. What is Ride up to right now? And so that was the concept that birthed the video. But in classic snowboard fashion, we didn't really know we were filming this until like halfway through the year. So they're saying two-year project, but it's kind of like one and a half and some other clips sprinkled in that Durham had. So we got most of the crew, not the entire crew. Um, Blavet was doing his thing with Mason, uh, the family video. Beeman was out doing natural selection, but majority of the, the crew uh, here for Rated R. And kind of more of the street guys, or the street squad. And so it was really easy for us because we're all such tight homies. Uh, we have like the same, you know, concept of what we wanted to do. So, you know, there wasn't really much direction. It was just like, hey, we got some filmers. Let's start filming and see where it goes from here. So who's the roster in this thing? I got, what, we got Reed? Got Reed. Got Jill. Yeah, Reed. We yeah, Reed. Shuby. Yeah, Reed. Good Spencer. Reed, Reed and Airhorn. Um, we got Krugs. Jacob. Krugs. C Navs. Cole Navin. Yeah. Crow. Crow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dirt Bike Dan, a.k.a. Danimals. Jed. Latex Mansion. Mm-hmm. Savannah Shinsky. Yep. And uh, then filming, we got John Stark, Parrish, Isaacs, and Durham. Yeah. Couple Spielbergs behind the lens. We had uh, we had Colt Colton Morgan come oh, on the yeah, trip Colt, too. Colt oh, Morgan thank came you, Colton. In Norway, that was awesome. Great and, lens. and Meyer. If you notice any, thank clips, you, Meyer. Like chopped in the video, Did that you might notice, be like Meyer's. a head chop. <laughs> <laughs> I got something special for Meyer. He gets a, he gets a little uh, one of these. Homie's cooked. We got to hit him with a homie's cook. Homie is cooked. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well let's get let's get into the video because it came out. You know, I'm gonna say someone quoted me Chris Beresford after the video we were blown away and he's like man I think that's the best video I've seen since Landline so I don't want to overhype it but it's a fucking awesome video feel good great writing great editing um, first things first I'd like to talk about the false summit ender the your ender where you hit that kink rail I'd love to hear the story behind that Jill uh, well this one was interesting I uh, after last year I, I last winter filming I kind of struggled a little bit I got hurt. I fractured part of my sacrum, and I kind of just was like, um, this is hard. This is a lot, a lot to take in on the body, whatever. And so this year I went into it, and I'm just like, no more kink rails. It was on a kink rail last year when I got hurt. So I was kind of just like, I just, I wanted to mix it up. Um, anyways, we were looking for spots. We were, we were somewhere, and, and John was, like, showing me something. He's like, what about, do you have interest in this? And we got there, and I was like, eh, not really. And right next to it was this rail that I was like, I mean, maybe if my stars aligned in the moment, I would try it. And I was just like, ah, kind of at this point, like throwing shit at a wall and seeing what sticks. And, and I kind of looked at him. I was like, you know, I'm not maybe I'll, maybe I'll try the rail. And he kind of looked at me like I, I, in a way, I kind of feel like that was his plan because he's kind of crazy. But it ended up working out. Um, I went there for a day in no dice. It was kind of like just the scene was off, if you will. Like, did I you just wasn't set really... it up and try it or did you just look at it? We looked at it. We went back, set it up, and tried it. But it was kind of like later in the day. It wasn't like really feeling it. I hated. I hated everything I was kind of wearing. Wearing. Look at the kit crisis. Yeah, it was a, a little, a little tight. Scenario. A little tight okay, shirt. Got it. Yep. Um, and it was, you know, I don't think this had anything to do with it really. But it was like my first time filming with Parrish. John was also there, and um, or one of the first clips that I got with Parrish and. It didn't work out. We went back and he looked at me. He's like, I would really love to film that. And I was like, all right, well, we'll go back. So when time freed up, we went back and Reed came with me as well. And like within like the first, I don't know, Reed, what? 12 tries, I would say. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So um, it happened super, super quick. This yeah, is a Reed giant even, rail, by the way. Yeah. I don't think that we yeah, yeah, that. Giant ba balance being kink rail. Reed yeah, wasn't yeah. even looking at the time. He was on his phone. I don't That's think. so not true. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving you tips and tricks. <laughs> I was helping. So I was Reed helping. didn't care that you were doing this. Continue. I didn't care. But anyway, so so <laughs> I, you know, meanwhile, I was like talking to some of my friends who skateboard and, and the Zoomies 100K big bash was coming up. And big party. Big party. <laughs> and it's just like a funny environment. To, I just And it's an excuse for me to go see my friends who do other activities. Um, I had to let the demons breathe. Yeah. So so I told Respect. myself, they kept calling me. They're like, are you coming? They come, you coming? And I was like, no, I'm not. And then we got to talk, and I was like, well, if I do this rail, I'll come. Like, then I'll feel, like, a little bit better about leaving the trip. So I go back with Reed, and, yeah, it happens super quick, which was awesome. And, like, yeah, pretty much right away I was, like, 
I'm fine. I'm fine to Colorado in an hour. So John within yeah, yeah within break 90, it down, Reed. I was watching it <laughs> within 90 seconds. Like we're all super fucking excited. It was awesome to watch. Happened so quick, and maybe it was a little unexpected after battling it the a couple of previous days. But um, I would say within 90 seconds of riding away, she's on her phone renting a car in Denver and booking a flight. She's like, <laughs> all right. Stay strapped in. <laughs> Haven't even yeah. Yeah. strapped. Stay strapped. Stay strapped. Yeah. Pretty and much. then she's Straight like, all right, airport. I'm going to need to get to the airport in 45 minutes. And that is John so was awesome. like, hell yeah. It was the biggest uh, rock star move I've ever seen. He, yeah. He, John was encouraging it. He lo- He was I, living vicariously through it. So it you fun. rewarded yourself with going to Colorado to fucking rage <laughs> after you did the kink reel. I wouldn't even say rage. No, okay. I, I, I mean, we had fun. Yeah, um, yeah sure. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you know? No better way, too, though. Respect. Really? You it, earned it. It was fun. I, en- I think it was like the, yeah, the novelty of being like, it was exciting. I was like, oh, I'm leaving. I'm getting, mm-hmm. out, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Sometimes you need to find motivation to do something, too. Yeah. Go see your friends. That's great. And then yeah. do we want to talk about the Front 270 after? I mean, why, why not? We're just, people are going to see the video. I thought that was amazing. You did another one for the pedestrian? For the pedestrian, yeah. We, so, yeah. Uh, we set that spot up with shopping carts. We'd fill shopping carts of, <laughs> with snow yeah. and push it over and dump them. It was like snow was melting in Oslo, so it was really easy to work with. But you, so we'd bring a shopping cart to a snowbank and just run run laps. Yeah, you know, I always find that interesting. You like kind of you get to a spot and you're like, shit, we can't make like we need something to make this work. And like nine out of ten times, there's like some random thing, tool, device, shopping cart in this case that's just there that works. And it's just that. the ingenuity. Imagine what yeah. we did if we like actually got an education and like put our brains towards something. <laughs> Speak like the MacGyvering. <laughs> <laughs> like, College we could be building like crazy bridges or like skyscrapers, but we're like, no, how do we get this snow to that landing so I can like chuck my head at this rail? It's I mean, more- you do kind of good at that with your block building. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. talk block building. You got some techniques that people might not know about, right? Yeah. I feel like Spencer should start this story off. Well, <clears throat> guru. I've, yeah. been, I've been doing this for a while, and it's just funny to go on a trip with Reed. He's been filming, <laughs> hey, but he's, he's, he's still he's green. green. He's, he's still green, green a little yeah. bit. Oh, yeah. my. Don't give me that. He, well, he's a global am, by the way. Oh, that's, that's, that's true. why. Yeah. True. Still yeah. a global am. Yeah. Yep. So it was fun, you know, the <laughs> tricks of the trade, showing around a little bit and just how to work. But, you know, these Dust Fox guys, uh, I love uh, it. There's wait, like wait, wait, wait. We're not them. full dumbass mode, though. <laughs> no, but you got like you're an army of you This guy's like a perfectionist psycho with it and it's awesome most helpful person on a trip ever but pays off you're making mm. us sound like some jackasses out something. there yeah Spencer, right there's like an army of you guys it's like it's like it's a, the green shovel army yeah the green shovel <laughs> army you go there there's no snow like five seconds later you the, the swarm comes in you got the spot built but sometimes you want to just come in and like look at it and be like okay where what do we actually have to do here what because it's going to make this better a lot of times I find that people are battling the spot and not the trick. Like mm, if you just take a little bit sure. of time mm. to get the in run right or get the lip set because you're just so frantic. You're like, I'm going to do another one. And there's this giant rut. And you're like, well, the rut is actually throwing you way over there. Just like breathe and let's figure it out. Well, his hollow head is also part of his advantage to getting the trick. Yeah, hollow thy skull. The hollow thy skull and get thy trick. <laughs> um, but what happened? What? We showed up. There was It was... We showed up to Norway. It was awesome. Ton of snow, warm. And then we go to bed and it became like Arctic temperatures and <laughs> all of the snow melted. <laughs> then there's just like a foot of, I don't even think a foot, what, like six inches of just I would ice. Say, yeah. Yeah. I would say maybe a foot because there was still snow, but it was just ice cubes. Like you'd have to, like we'd had a metal shovel and we were actually cutting ice cubes. Yeah. We were cutting blocks. And we showed up to this thing and there's no snow. Uh, and they're like, it's not possible. And maybe selfishly, I just didn't want to sit in the car and drive around for eight hours. I was like, we got this. We can start building this thing. And so we start cutting blocks, and we had a full train of people bringing over blocks to set up this, like, what, eight-foot-tall quarter pipe yep. with six inches of snow. And none of these guys believed. They didn't think that it was possible at all. Uh, but it just took a little ingenuity, and it was so fun. Spencer's there like, this is better than if it was slushy and perfect snow. We could just put the blocks on top of each other, let it melt, let it freeze overnight. It'll be perfect. No, it was Foreman style. You're like whistling. You're like pointing over there, pointing mm-hmm. over there. They'll get too close to the lip. I'll get pissed off. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't touch that. You don't touch that, Reed. Go get me another block. Yep. 
Well, that's thank a, you, Spencer. But, you know, it's like, well, Jill, are you on the pro team? I am now. Yes. Yeah, uh, Spencer, are you on the pro team? I am. Are Are you on the pro team? No. Nope. Yeah. Well, there it is. <laughs> I mean, that, that's it's. There's tools of the trade, and you w- got to work your way up the ranks, you know, and you got to learn from somebody. Build the brain. You got to build the brain. Build thy brain. Not not to some extent, though. You don't have to put your jacket on uh, the pros or anything oh like God. that. <laughs> that's a Joe Sexton reference, I believe. Well, um, yeah, that's good stuff. I, and then you ended up teabagging that thing, right? For yeah, those, that would sounds be Sounds like a crazy out-of-context <laughs> thing to say, but it's a trick <laughs> called a teabag. <laughs> Ham, yeah, yeah, ham plant tricks. Yeah, yeah. So Spencer cool. hates Spencer hates ham plant <laughs> yeah, tricks. The wibbly and names. wobbly. Just the name. But it's like a front side invert pretzel, I yeah. guess. Very difficult maneuver. Very difficult. We let's let's get into some substance here because I think about nowadays we got social media, everybody puts their clips on the gram. What is your guys' thoughts on the importance of a full length video in this day and age? I mean, I think that I can speak for the both of us that we grew up with these full length videos. For me, it's like changed my entire life. The course of my life based on these videos, like a lot of my terminology, vernacular, everything, quotes I knew growing up came from snowboard videos. It was you know part of the culture and upbringing and the reason why we'd go snowboard and all of our inspiration behind it. So now with like social media, other things coming about, I think it's really cool to keep that um, culture alive and keep doing the things that is like a, an ode to what brought us up and what we liked watching. So for Ride to give us the opportunity to make a full length film when you know it seems like people want to put focus on like a something more quick, uh, Instagram or or these short videos, uh, it's really cool to give back to that snowboard legacy. Thank you for fighting the good fight, Ride. Ride. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> It's a good voice video. crack. Right. Also, like, but the, they didn't have to film any of the shit. So, I mean, no, they didn't. <laughs> no, I think like a big thing too that I really appreciate about filming videos is being able to work on a project that isn't so instant and like satisfying right away is something special because you take the time and the energy to put it into it, and it just creates something that much greater that sticks in the brain longer than it would if you would put it on social media. And I think that's something we talk about often, like how it's just. People are doing it for likes and for sponsors and things like that. Just like meet their quotas of what they feel is necessary to maintain their job. But I thought it was really awesome. I I think it is awesome that Ride, yeah, has given us this opportunity to work on something and put more of our energy and time and like brain power into something like creating something more beautiful in a sense rather than just like checking off like something I need to do a month for this brand or something and. I don't know, it's just like stick, there's more, like there's more pride that goes into something like that, I think. And to be able to work with close friends and people I consider really good friends, yeah, like snowboarding and out of snowboarding together on something, it's just, it's awesome. Like we're so lucky to have that and I hope it continues throughout snowboarding. Absolutely. Reed, you got to take? Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of really good videos coming out, but there's also a lot of mediocre shit coming out because... <laughs> Like c- companies, you know, half maybe half their marketing budget. I have no idea. I'm just throwing numbers out here. Goes to <laughs> fucking Instagram or some shit. So then they don't have enough money to invest a whole season into having their team film for wh- whatever project they're working on. So they just squeeze it all into one trip, and it's you. You can tell. Yeah. Um. So I think with like an opportunity like this, like I, I was really really uh honored and happy to be a p- part of it but also i was like all right don't uh try not to put out any mediocre shit because then you're part of the problem kind of thing i it- think it's just cool that that our team and you know people say it all the time you know teams being friends or whatever but i think it's really true in this sense like we are yeah. all super good yeah. friends and you could see that like before this video even started um during it like our group chat Shout out to the group chat. Uh, the ride group chat was crazy. Everyone just sending selfies, updates. I was on the couch for the most part of the year because I hit my head. So it felt like I was still on the trip because I was just clued into everything that's going on. All the drama, everything that everyone's eating, selfies. I don't know, <laughs> selfies in the bathroom, mirror pics. Like it was crazy. And then at the premiere afterwards, everyone's hanging at the house. And it wasn't like, oh, we have to get everyone here. Everyone's already there. Like, we're already such a tight squad. 
Um, the, the hardest part was deciding who was actually going to go in the bomb hole limo. On thank the you, Chris. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Yeah. Oh, that was, was fucking awesome. What about pulling up and there's the kids gassed up in the car next to us? Oh, that was like insane. Yeah, they're stuff. going to the premiere. They're like, what up? Yeah, that yeah. was a feel-good moment. That full circle kind of just feels like a decent pat on the back, mm-hmm. I guess. I remember I was in the limo and I said... I hope this is burned into my memory forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the limo suspension is absolutely clapped, but other than that, <laughs> everything's good. We had like nine people in the back of the limo or eight people or something. It was it was awesome. It was, it was an honor to give you guys a ride and then go, show up to a packed house. There was 600 plus people there and just the snowboarding culture and vibe was electric and it's good. You know, you never get that sense of community from a, a post on Instagram, but when you show up to a premiere and the place... We had to restart your part. Or they had to restart oh, your yeah. part, and it was just like I thought the place was going to burn to the ground. Everybody was going psycho. It that was, was awesome. so fun. yeah, a little tech issue. M- morning of, I think there was like I think the capacity of that place was six fifty, um, and there was like two hundred tickets sold. And we're like, shit, is anyone going to show up? And then a couple hours later, it was sold out, which was classic uh, snowboard fashion. That's so cool. Yeah, the other thing that's cool to talk about in in your part. You say something like you land a trick and you're like, March 1st, I'm like, time to start drinking again or something <laughs> like that. And you crack a white claw. Yeah. You know, yeah. B- back in the day, it seems like everybody would just get shit faced all the time. Snowboarding was about lo- getting loose and partying. But you guys seem like you're kind of professionals. But what prompted the, the non drinking for most of the winter this year? Uh, there was definitely some exceptions. So it wasn't the whole well, In winter. Jersey, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. When I was in Jersey, <laughs> With, with my family for Christmas, it was... Well, those are international waters. Yeah. Anything goes, <laughs> Anything goes yeah. in Jersey. Jersey doesn't count, but aside and, from and Jersey... Also, Thanksgiving was a... Uh, international waters scenario. Okay. <laughs> and then w- there was also fucking NBA All-Star Weekend. So. Also, international <laughs> waters scenario. So but other than those- that, other than that, <laughs> staying away from the sauce. Well, birthday too. Did you throw that in there? That was Thanksgiving. Okay. Overlap. Two for one. Yep, yeah, that's we had a two a, for a one. A bunch of sober people <laughs> yeah. on the squad, huh? Yeah. yeah, especially. And even if you weren't completely sober, it almost was this just like a vibe in the house or we're on trips. Like it just kind of like buckling down, doing it and going to bed early and eating snacks instead I think, of drinking. I think we we're just all super comfortable with each other. Yeah. Um, it wasn't weird being in Airbnbs. It wasn't like, okay, who are we staying with? Like it was just business as usual, the same people we hang out with. If we're not on a trip, uh, so what? You guys were eating a lot of cookies every night, <laughs> every night, and it was like an argument of what kind to get. It was it was crazy, and then it was at one point it's like who ate the rest of the log was like where's the log? Yeah, there was kind of some family yeah. feud vibes going a little bit. Like we are so close. I yeah. remember that it Jed makes it like a little tough because there's no there's no boundaries. It's not like a working relationship where you're like oh I have to keep this cordial. It's like. Jacob, get the fuck out of my room. I'm staying in here. Yeah. I remember Jed was staying with Danimals when we were in Minnesota, and a lot of us were at this other Airbnb, and he took a log, a, a, oh, cookie, that's what it a was. cookie roll yeah. log, yeah. just snagged it back to Danimals. As it was oh, he stole hilarious. it from the Airbnb. He stole yeah. it from the Airbnb, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, people weren't happy about that one. So you guys are, the good thing is you guys are hammering cookies instead of getting blacked out, basically. Yeah, I just think, I think that's the... That's a good, good move. Gotta replace one evil with the other. Yeah. Which one's worse? Uh, you feel better if you stick to the cookies. Okay. Right. Yeah, I was wondering. <laughs> you got to burn some cows out there. <laughs> yeah. Or sh- you know, pick an ice. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, you know, you mentioned you were having a kit crisis for a second out there. Um, and you guys seem like, you know, the fit, the feel, you guys' gear is important. Who is the number one, like, kit crisis offender, like, freaking out about their gear on the trips? I think everyone's I in think, the same yeah. boat almost. Yeah. Like everyone packs a huge backpack with options for mm. the day. Or at least yeah, if I you're do. not bringing options, you're kind of messing up. Yeah, when like, you when you catch someone over at the car looking yeah. at the the windshield as the mirror. Yeah. And you're oh, just, every time. Yeah, you're just trying to pull it off. Like, oh, I'm just back by the car, and you're like actually looking close. <laughs> like, how does this thing fit? And this is all right. <laughs> it's bad, and then it comes back later, and you're like, you're switching I hats. I really wish I was. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's interesting. I am. Um, but see, it's like what what you look like is one thing, but it's actually like if it's restricting on me, it's like mm, functionality. Yeah, well. it'll make me like get my tight neck. But classic yeah. feel good, look good, feel uh, whatever. Good. Deion, Deion Sanders, if you look good, you feel good. You feel good, you play good. You play good, they pay good. Well, that you, they that's what they say, but they also want you wearing their stuff. Well, if you wear, th- it's also <laughs> so it's kind of like you look a- good, you feel good, but you wear your sponsors' logos good, you get paid good. There we go. That's I actually like that. what it should. I don't be. have any uh. issues with that. <laughs> The North Face. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been fucking with the stone since day one. 
<laughs> Seth, do not worry about it. Do not worry, for the, guys. For the Don't listeners, not. Reed is wearing a Volcom crew neck. Uh, I, oh. I keep it stoned up. Yeah, he keeps it stoned. Stay stoned. Yeah. All right. Uh, another thing that was cool, I noticed you had a bunch of lines in your part, Shuby. What prompted the lines? Um, well, I think that my clip count was down, and I'm mm. just trying to extend the timeline as much as possible. Yeah. No, I think it, you know, filmed <laughs> a bunch of filmed a bunch of videos and it's like what is interesting you, when you're out there looking for spots, what am I trying to do and just a certain look or feel or vibe uh, is the direction I was trying to go with this. If a spot like really spoke to me, then I, that's what I was trying to snowboard on versus like hey, let's just try to see as many clips as possible, get as many clips as possible and see how it looks at the end. More thought out and I think that I was just drawn towards the lines. Um or if there's just snowboarding in general, that's what I really like to see is when like people are riding into a into a trick and then riding out, maybe a turn, something that feels like it is true snowboarding, like there's just a little bit more to it versus like stop and go, just hit a rail. Um, and yeah, I think there's that is just kind of seeing what what we could snowboard on. And I was hurt for the beginning of this year so any time to like try to get a line and extend the part a little bit too is good mm -hmm. yeah you also see people style more when they're riding too you actually see what they look like as opposed to like a fish eye zooming through the clip and in and out so yeah a lot of the time too i feel like it's what happens in between the two tricks or whatever in the line that will like hook someone in betwixt if you will in betwixt in betwixt yeah <laughs> i do not know in betwixt <laughs> yeah it's uh it's a more formal in between um, and then also, we, I mean, we got to talk about a couple things. One thing would be, uh, you know, Jed's footage is unbelievable. He kid was on an, a freaking tear. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, everybody, we don't have him here to talk about it, but there's some A-grade beef in there. And I love uh, Dan's Ender, the, the shipping container clip. I think they've been holding on to that one. Yeah, that's that, been, I think that's three or four years in the making. I've been waiting for that to come out. Yeah, that, I think that was filmed four years ago in Omaha. That's what's cool about Durham is, you know, <laughs> he, he's been with Ride. He's, like, made the image of Ride in all the videos. And so, uh, you know, it's not like we just pick someone for this project to make it happen. He's been in-house. He's as much a part of the team as we are. And Thank so, you, Durham. There's been clips Should throughout. the super air horn for the video? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what this is. It's just like a celebration of his editorial <laughs> yeah. skills. And so yeah, that was up. awesome because, <laughs> you know, him and Dan go way back, and I think that he's, you know, filmed some stuff, and he's like, oh, yeah, I, I know there's going to be a point in time when we have to put this out, so I'm saving until then. Yeah, and a couple clips throughout, um, and just some other cool stuff of the team that he's been filming. And there's the, the Ojo truck. Which oh, is really yeah, cool. That was rad. Dan's yep. Ojo truck to bring that back from something we've had before in Roses when Dylan was there and in the uh, that ride truck. So kind of like a homage back to some older ride footage mm -hmm. is really sweet. Killer. Well, everybody sitting here has a uh, really good footage in this video. It's it's a top notch video. I remember watching it and I see you guys all the time and I never see you snowboard because I see you in like real life when we're just hanging out and I'm like. These guys are fucking incredible snowboarders. It was really cool. I like forget how good you guys are at snowboarding, so it was really fun to watch. Thanks, well, thank Chris. You. Yeah, thank Thanks. you. I think the same goes for us, and watching Jed, too, is crazy. I mean, my whole childhood, I was like, these parts are wild, and then to see it unfold and everyone else in the video in front of you, it's yeah, it's shocking sometimes. Because you're like, yeah, this is my buddy. This is Jacob who uh, <laughs> stole my bed. But, oh, my God, <laughs> do you see that back lift? That was really good. <laughs> Yeah, to, to add what, to what Spencer was saying, uh, it was really cool for me. I I grew up looking up to Spencer and Jed and Danimals and like having posters of those guys in my room. Um, so that was like a. It was just really cool to be able to work with them and get closer with them. And do all you that still stuff. look up to us, or for sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> That's good. Now he's looking down on him though after that part. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I'm looking up. <laughs> nope. Uh, we didn't talk about what sleeper. I forgot to mention. You have a back rodeo seven in your part. Oh yeah, I learned that. I learned that. Uh, it's actually got a bonsai flip. Yeah, it's bonsai. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I learned it like a week before. <laughs> <laughs> 
I thought I did it with like there. If you look closely, there's like a weird flail in it, but the fisheye kind of hides it. So that's that's sweet. No way, dude. That's just uh, the way you you put your style on it. I think it's great. Everything oh, doesn't have. What to about be your song? Oh, gap year. Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, Justin Phipps, Ethan, and Kean. Uh, local Salt Lake bands, and they're fucking awesome. And then they played at the after party. And they played at the after party. And you? Well, then, and then uh, Mike, Harry, and Mike played. I don't know if they Harry have and a the band. Mikes. Harry and the Mikes. Is that their, I don't know We're, if they got They don't a name. like that name, but that's what it is. Harry uh, and the Mikes. All right, Harry and the Mikes. And then <laughs> I did a song with them to, to, to end it out. It was so fun. Amazing. And then how did you feel the next morning? Actually, not too bad okay. for some reason. I mean, for definitely beat up, <laughs> but I think I was still just like so excited that I wasn't gonna let it get me down. Mm. Do you know what Cole Jed and I did? What's that? Smashed a bunch of cookies. Nice. Kept the tradition going. <laughs> nice <laughs> respect. All right, so everybody uh, that's listening to this, be sure to check out uh, Ride Rated R awesome video out. When's it out? I That's think November, uh, mid November. 29th? Uh, yeah, 27th 29th. or 29th. November. Yeah. But we're doing a bunch more premieres. Uh, we're hoping to go to Denver, New York, Portland, Minneapolis, Europe. maybe a stop in Europe, Innsbruck or something, and maybe California. Mm. Get so that. If, you're, if you're there, get your liver primed up there, Reed. Godspeed. Hold dude. on, soldier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got somebody knocking on the door. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, come on in. Someone's in the studio door here. Oh, God. Who the hell is this? Oof. What's going on here? Is that an Uber driver? Is this Uber? Are you <coughs> You Uber know, Eats? my name's Terrence. I couldn't help but overhear you guys talking about the rated <laughs> R movie. All right, now, I was there. First of all, a couple complaints. Number one, not enough Toby Keith in that movie, okay? I'm trying to bring my lady, have a nice night, maybe lube her up for something we don't do very often. I got to come sit through a bunch of kids playing around on a toy, hitting handrails. Where are the triple corks, okay? That, I, I thought I was going to get a spectacle, and I got a bunch of children playing around. So, yeah, uh, Terrence, Uber driver, thank you. Uh, thank Fuck you, Terrence. Thank you, Terrence, for your input. <laughs> There's our Uber driver, Terrence. So, uh, all right. Well, be sure to check out uh, Ride, Rated R. Um, coming to you soon. All right, we're back. Uh, check out the Ride video. It's fucking awesome. Um, now, let's fire up another um, Instagram question here. And this one was submitted by Zach Hale. And the question is, it's for Nils. Have you ever seen rock climbing porn? <laughs> Um. Yeah. Yeah. I have. There, there was a. Uh, there was a video going around for a little bit that all of my dear friends in snowboarding. It was their uh, one reach out I've ever gotten from a bunch of them about the one time they're interested in rock climbing. Yeah, the one time all my friends are interested really in this other part of my uh, life is uh, when there was a okay we an just entertaining to, video. We just had to clear that up. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a real thing. Yes, it's, it's a real, real thing. thing. It's, a real it's thing. out thing. there. All right, so uh, we're going to get to a new section of the show called Nitro Turbo Takes. It's, uh, it's rapid-fire questions. So you got 30 seconds to answer each one of these. You don't want to be long-winded. Uh, okay, here we go. Welcome to Nitro Turbo Takes. Brought to you by Nitro Snowboards and Canoe Eliasson. Nitro Snowboards has been building snowboard products, boards, boots, and bindings for over 34 years. And has one simple mission to inspire people to get out and go snowboarding and support their local and global community by supporting the shops, the organizations, and the people who are dedicating their lives to this. Snowboarding is what got us here, and giving back to snowboarding is what keeps us here. The deeper the layers, the better the cake. Just like the snowboarding community, this season Nitro is releasing a two-part film project, Layers. The Unintentional Culture of Snowboarding, a full-length 80-minute documentary exploring the different layers of the snowboard community around the world. And Cake, a classic get hyped to go boarding with your friends kind of action film, starring the infamous Nitro Snowboard Team. Premieres are happening worldwide, and both films are premiering online November 15th, so we'll see you there. All right, that's our good friend Canute Eliasson, absolute legend. Uh, so he came up with these questions. Um presented by Nitro Snowboards, and Silk is going to read them. They're each, you know, aimed at each one of us, potentially, and then uh, try to keep them under 30 seconds. If you don't, I'll hit you with a big old buzzer to keep going. 
to get get you know it's like the pull you off the, the stage kind of thing the hook was that they called it the hook close the curtains yeah close yeah. the curtains all right fire it up silk all right first one's for jay stone what was your first snowboard shop you worked in milo sport salt lake city nils was it harder getting an engineering degree or winning the free ride world tour engineering degree long shot on that um was the w- is winning natural selection harder yeah, because I haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> Harder than all three. <laughs> all right, Zach, describe the feeling when you snowboard in one word. Freedom. Mm, great answer. Wow. Jay Stone. I like that. That's the most exciting thing Zach said I was going like buttery or something. Yeah, he's gonna be like, he does have a couple neurons up there. Precise. Dope. <laughs> Dude, Freedom's <crit>. good. <laughs> all right, Jay Stone, do snowboard co- companies or ski companies make better boards? Ski companies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. Just been doing it longer. Nils, how will kids buy snowboards in the future? Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, Zach, which is scarier, the back 270 in Ogden on the big gap rail or the drop front board on the pillar in trash? Uh, back 270 in Ogden. Mm. Nils. What do you think about Sam Taxwood biting your cowboy hat style these days? Uh, what's the term? Like uh, something about flattering when you copy people? Imitation yeah, he is... actually wrote that as uh, the follow-up. They say imitation is the <laughs> highest form of flattering. So I, al- was, I was extremely flattered because I also feel like I hadn't been running uh, cowboy stuff that much recently. Mm. So He's We're- also wondering if you're just going to get a bigger hat. Um, it looked like his hat was pretty big, so I don't know if I'll be able to do that. He's beating that all one right. into the ground. Chris, fake, fake cowboy. What's your favorite snowboard crew of all time? <laughs> favorite crew? Damn, yeah. probably like OG Form Eight. All right, Jay Stone, bar up or bar down? <laughs> bar up, always. All right, this is kind of an all play scenario right here. Favorite snowboard shop right now? Milo, Milo. Eastern Border slash Eastern Border. <laughs> Dark side. All right, last one for Chris. What is the last snowboard video you watched on a TV at home? Shit, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, Mark McMorris's like YouTube series. I don't know. I wouldn't call them vlogs, but like his his YouTube channel, it's really good. And we're still under thirty seconds. I mean, I love it. You guys should check it out. He goes over to New Zealand. All right, that's it. <laughs> All right, that's a fun segment. That's a that's new cool. segment there. Thanks, Nitro Canute. Turbo Ticks. Thanks, Canute, Canute came up with those Hope questions. Well. All right. Uh, Whew. All right, where are we going to go from here? Well, it's the middle. It's Snowboarding hasn't really started yet, so we don't have a lot of heater clips. Um, so the one we were going to talk about, uh, Jack Kearney's backflip onto the dirt. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. So were you there sorry. for that, Zach? No, I wasn't. But, I mean, I saw it on Instagram, obviously, and I was like, this is Just insane. Have it's you like know- everything I wouldn't want to do <laughs> yeah. on my snowboard. Where I'm like, it's like a straight step-down backflip. Like, at first, you'd want something poppy, so that's like a red flag. And then it's... Dirt and grass. I feel like you just eject forward. It's what so what uh, year? What uh, age were you when you learned how to backflip, Nils? I was in my early twenties, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, one just here. I just kind yeah. of uh, you know the <laughs> development camps sort of iced over that one. I never really dialed it in, <laughs> and then uh, they were folks. We were focused on spins <laughs> and results. And uh, edge control. Um, I remember you being a late bloomer on the. I was a late flip. bloomer on the backflip. I still, honestly, I've like consciously gone into seasons to try get better at it, and I'm still. Not he's, there. Well, he's actually got a spreadsheet, and he has the time and the <laughs> date and the location of where he's going to try it, time blocked. So. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of overlaid with weather. You know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> snow conditions. <laughs> exactly. Temperature. Moon cycle. Yeah. Yeah. And we obvi- we talked about Taiga Hasegawa's, but let's put the uh, the. Kokomo's uh, Cab 12 and Cab 14, uh, oh, obviously, yeah. Yeah. straight heaters. At, um, and then Zoe, I believe it was a switchback 12 that was just insane. What was that, what was, was that the one she was grabbing nose or tail or something? Dude, it was the so cam. sick. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of good footage. Sorry we're a little weak in that department. I'm sure we're missing stuff, but it's a little light this time of year. We don't got a lot of clips to talk about. Um, so, uh, we got a couple other questions that I think would be fun to get into. Uh, this one's from Zach King and it's directed towards Silk. Silk, you going to put out any more fire songs soon? <laughs> what up, Zach? Love you, buddy. Uh, for sure. I work on music every day. Good stuff coming. Silk days, every platform. Check it out. <laughs> Can't wait. Look at that. Look at the Spags. plug. Um, all right. This is an interesting topic here, guys. So, uh, obviously I love riding dirt bikes and I noticed that some of the privateers that race supercross, they have a hard time finding sponsors. So 
some of them have gone to selling a part of their logo on their bike, their shroud, to OnlyFans models. So there are dirt bikers that ride for... <laughs> They're sponsored by OnlyFans <laughs> models, and it's even gone to the actual platform itself. Sponsors some dirt bikers. Now we got—I gotta ask, what's your take, Zach? Would you ride for, <laughs> like, let's just say an OnlyFans model? She pays to play sticker on the board. What's, Are you riding for him? What's yes the or number? No? Yeah. Yeah, we're like, what's the number? Is it a good number? Um, let's just say fifteen hundred a month. Yeah. Why not? He- <laughs> <laughs> oh, <low bar. laughs> I mean. It just a sticker, just, the, yeah, just, just a little a sticker. sticker, just not like, little, large. QR. We're code. talking QR we're ta- code on the whole. Uh, yeah, QR code, half the nose. Uh, that's not no. You're not doing QR code. Mm, I mean, for half the nose for fifteen hundred dollars a month. Mm. No. Oh, okay. Just wondering. We got to call Runky on that. It's more of a Runky <laughs> question. Huh? Might as well uh, hit up the slope style team for this one. They're looking for some extra bucks. So. <laughs> yeah, U.S. Yeah, U.S. snowboard team. Get, get a ban- only fans. <laughs> get a banner on the half pipe. Yeah, we got to get so only fans involved in <laughs> comp- competitive snowboard. Looking for some outside sponsorship. Yeah, that yeah. might be it. Would you ride for only fans, Nils? If the number was there, okay, for sure. Big sticker on the nose. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It'd be a bigger number than 1,500. <laughs> yeah. for sure. I would just be a little out of place on like, Nils' board. Yeah, this ugly, big, white, like, <laughs> yeah, like QR, QR code. code. Like, boy. <laughs> would it be like a long-term contract? Like, could I get like a 10-year contract? I'm not contract? sure. I mean, this you know is all I mean? hypothetical. I'd say, mm-hmm. you know, we're usually looking at like, it's a short-term, like a six-month, one-year type of deal. You know, One post a month. Yeah. I would do a, I could do a <laughs> six-month contract and I would just time it through the off season. Mm. I'd spend yeah. one summer riding with it. Yeah. And but you maybe. have to participate on the platform. Wait, what about if you had to have your own <laughs> rock climbing board? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's just, obviously a market factor. for this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Young what about you? rock climbing. Uh, you know, it's a... It's an interesting concept. I'd have to think about it a little bit, but I do think Mr. Politician over looking here. at uh, yeah, this is where you just pretend like you answer the question with like something that's not even remotely <laughs> close to the question. You ever see Louis Vito on our yeah. podcast? We ask him you're a question. You're diverting right now, and you just divert, and you're like, you just scratching well, like, your head, like, what did I even just ask this guy? <laughs> well, I that's think what the real doing. question is how how good is OnlyFans doing? <laughs> yeah, that's, and we should talk about that. Well, I think it's an interesting concept of like how do you how do you bring more money into snowboarding and and like make it. It's really you got to grow the audience in terms of there's there's not enough eyeballs on snowboarding to be lucrative for the the brands I think right I don't know for sure yeah apparently it's lucrative enough for the OnlyFans yeah yeah I was gonna <laughs> say you're making so much money off that you're sponsoring athletes off of the platform is insane <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's crazy maybe uh, we're in the wrong wrong no, line I, of work yeah, I've been saying that for the last five years or whatever since it came out I was like it sounds like some easy cash. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right, this is a <laughs> this is a hard hitting question here. Uh, this one's from Low Oak Low OK three one one three. Sorry, I butchered your IG handle. Oh, Low Oak three one three. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Uh, hmm. <laughs> biggest mental block. Uh, like not dying. <laughs> 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 maybe maybe hitting too deep there. <laughs> I don't know. Right. That stuff. Uh, even like. Chiller days, you could be a Brighton, but it, like the reality is, there's there's avalanches, there's trees, there's rocks, there's rocks you don't see. I mean, like I, I'm kind of conservative. I wear a helmet. I wear a mouth guard some days. So, you know, obviously, I avalanche skills, rescue techniques. Yeah. So I guess like, sorry, it's kind of serious, but yeah, stay alive. <laughs> That's yeah. a mental block to work around. <laughs> yeah, fe- fear. That's yeah. One fear. word. I'll hit it with one I, word. Fear. Fear. Am I going to snap my leg? <laughs> okay. That's just, that leads us into a better hypothetical. You're on top of the jump. You've committed to switch back side seven. <laughs> you, you don't want to do a switch. Like, nobody wants to be like, you're like, ah. Like, it's like getting the car with the Panther in, uh, <laughs> in Talladega Nights. I'm just going to get in that car. I'm just going to drive that car, right? Like, you don't want it. Drive that car. I, I don't want to, you don't want to drive the car with the fucking Panther or the Cougar. If I say rather, yeah. But uh, like, what's what up how how do you get yourself to to do it? Yeah, totally. Uh, fear. I mean, I could. I don't want to go over time here, but um, fear fear is a really cool topic. I feel like I think and I've overthought a lot of things. Um, I'm a head case, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> and to uh to like figure out my process, there is just a bunch of like mental preparation that goes into it. Um, and I just really try to like. Say there's a jump like Chad's Gap. 
I know it can be hit. I know it's been done on it. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. I know it's possible. Um, I also know it's scary. So I'm trying to like mitigate what is dangerous there. Cause what's scary, the, the scary part is going super fast and then coming up short and maybe breaking both your ankles or like the <laughs> lips iced over. Like you could probably like say you pile drive into the knuckle, you could like snap your neck and die. Right. Like it's not, it's not an unrealistic thing that could, the worst case scenario could happen. Right. Um, so then you're trying to think like, okay, how do I have the best result? And I just, yeah, I, I think, think it through a bunch and I try to figure out what decisions need to happen in order for something safe to, to happen. Um, and then sort of what my like cues are for when it's time to bail out or stop, um, or what my like exit strategy would be, you know, like, oh, if I fall by this point on the in run like let me just try lean over as much as i can to try not go directly off the jump and only go off part of the jump um, so you're just like managing your variables that you can control in yeah like what scary situations yeah, what can i control mind. analytical right mind what can i control and then like because most times i really can't um like a lot of i think a lot of snowboarders are able to like be afraid and then they just like turn it off drop in they they, they storm. do the first hit yeah, that's right. I was gonna say I'm the exact. Yeah. Opposite. they do the first hit, and then all like the fear is gone. Where mine, I'm like really, com I like have to be like comfortable and solid and confident, and then kind of just have like a go time countdown too of like okay, one, two, three. And it, honestly, filming helps because you're also like you have to tell your crew like dropping in five, and in my mind, that's when it starts. I'm like five, four, three, two, one. Right? Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So fear management, it just comes over time and you try to think about what factors you can control and um, stay within your acceptable safety margin, which is different for everybody. I would love to hear Hailstorm's take on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I feel like I, I'm the exact opposite. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I mean, I always know. No, like, the I, reason he's wearing I, mean, I always know my, like, you know, my, my capabilities. You're good at getting yourself to try shit. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I just turn my brain off and I'm like, don't think about it. And it, like, I feel like the inner like kid with my dad behind me, just do it, do it, do it, <laughs> do it. Childhood sports trauma. Do it, do it or you're not <laughs> eating dinner. <laughs> there was like, there was, there was like one situation when I was a little kid where we went on this houseboat trip and my dad literally w wouldn't let me get off the top of the houseboat, like a two-story houseboat, and I was probably like eight or nine years old until I backflipped off of it. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, like things like that where it's like the fear management, like I know I could, if I know I could do it and I'm capable of doing it, I just like Turn it shut off. off and just I'm like, okay, just you could do it. Just go. Mm -hmm. Don't think about worst case scenario. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there's something that to be said. I remember I always used to tell myself like, you know what you're doing. It, like kind of like a self trust thing. that yeah. like, is is something I like had to lean into way more this yeah, year. Yeah, and I've always felt like we've gone, we've strapped in, hit the rail, hit the jump a million times. Another thing that helps me is like, I, I'm always like, dude, you're resourceful. You know when shit goes haywire, how to squirm your way out of the situation. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like trusting yourself. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's something that I started to implement more this year. Again, with trying to like change or push adjust my riding is like, dude, just trust yourself mm -hmm. and. Fucking try something, dude. You know, student's got to take because he's fucking sending big cliffs. Right? Oh yeah, he's getting it, dude. I, I'm definitely more on the nil side of things. Obviously, like I've just gotten hurt so much in my yeah. life, and I don't know if that's necessarily me just like going hail style, shutting my brain off and being like, <laughs> I'm just gonna go for it. But yeah, I definitely try to like, you know, like check a cliff out before I hit it, and not just like. I don't know. People like at Brighton on Pow Days, it's crazy. The, like the hospital cliff at the bottom, yeah. people just chuck their carcass off yeah. it and it's nuts. But yeah, I'm more on like the conservative side of life for sure. <laughs> you, you know what? Like cracks Well, me up? global senior ultra <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> title, you know, comes, yeah. comes with some responsibility. I love what it, uh, <laughs> what was Sage said one time. He's like, homework's done, hand in the paper. <laughs> 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 but straight up, dude. Uh, to a point, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've the, snowed our whole lives. You know what we're yeah. doing. And yeah. that, especially like when you are riding Brighton, you're like, dude, I've hit this cliff 20 times. I know how it is. Just go. And mm -hmm. then you like get that kind of mental fort, yeah. dude. I do think it's really important to talk about, though, because sometimes people put... They're like, oh, that guy doesn't get scared. Oh, that guy's whatever. And it's like, no. Like, I see, I've time, seen yeah. Zach do some of the gnarliest shit in person, and I've seen him work through fear. It's not like that's a bullshit cop-out statement. Everybody's scared. You're scared when you try to switch back so seven scared. on Chad's. It's like not, it's not about people that aren't scared. It's like people that just... 
do it fucking anyway. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, fear is yeah. one of your best senses that you can have. Yeah, totally. it's amazing. Yeah. Like just to get you into that mindset and like how do you manage the fear is really like ultimately what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. Totally. Good stuff. Getting deep. Gangs are getting deep. deep. <laughs> All right, it's time to get into the pub beer crap shoot presented by Pub Beer. It's time to roll some dice for some cheap fun presented by Pub Beer. No matter what you're doing, crack open a pub beer for cheap fun is always a safe bet. Responsibly. Legally, I should say. Now, Nils, roll that dice. We'll tell you what you got to do. Let's go. Uh, what's is Goon Gear? A six? six, yep. Six. Uh, ten? Or ten? Ten, yeah. Ten. Perfect ten. What's the biggest prize check you've won? Oh, uh, ten, <laughs> ten grand. Ten K? Where at? Ten K, yeah. I did a... Um, actually, it was uh, with Pub Beer. or uh, What's the brewery that Pub Beer's with Ten again? Barrel. Ten Barrel, yeah. So it was the Ten Barrel Big Air. Is that a batchy? Uh, oh, I remember that. In you Mount were- Bachelor. And there just like wasn't too many big dogs showing up. And I was I was in town filming splitboarding with Dirksen. <laughs> <laughs> did you do it on a splitboard? No, I did not. That'd be incredible. Um, but yeah, it was actually kind of fun story. Um, JD Dennis was there, who I think all of us probably know. He's Respect. a pilot now. Big shout out. Um, extremely good snowboarder. He was shredding. And uh, I knew I did, needed to do something big to win and the conditions were kind of shitty and I'd never done a, a cab 12 never done a 1260 mm-hmm. uh, I did a cab 9 or a cab 10 and I was just like I'm going for it and my last hit I just like went for one hucked off the lip and uh, stomped it and won I was like, yeah 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 mm-hmm. first, first try haven't done a 12 cents <laughs> great time to dust that thing off <laughs> dude, you, dude I know, I've tried you? when you did that was, uh, you were like 18 or something 19 no I was, 21 yeah, like, that wasn't that long 23 ago. no it was before because I think I was 21 or 22 in Pepper Rose. I think it was 20 20 20 I had like the old pickup truck with a lightning bolt oh that thing it. was sick yeah was it was sick. like a $2,000 20 year old pickup truck and <laughs> I was Zach 10 what, grand was a lot what, what was the most you won um probably 15 but like hot dogs no it was this burton rail days thing but then like they matched it and then like monster gave me like another like 10 or 15 grand for it. like it was like 30k take home or something dude it was like like it was 40. 40 like mm. it was like a nice i remember like i was like wow i was a it was tokyo rail days mm. student <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Zero, huh? Uh, got, got like a you know That's free tough. sleeping bag from like a bank slalom. <laughs> 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 Pretty good sizable check at the uh, bomb hole cups, dude. You might have to design your way into winning that yeah. thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. You coming for blood this year. This guy got twenty five hundred B- BHC, right? Yeah, yeah. That That's was a good great. one. Not a bad That's day. always great. Not a bad day. We could up our prize winnings too. So uh, we got work to do. Uh, yeah. You know, shout outs ten barrels. I shout think I technically beer. got both of you guys because I weren't. I won twenty once, so uh, real snow. I don't know if that counts. It's kind of a video oh, contest. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> just figured I'd kind of throw that one in there. It doesn't count. It Reli- doesn't count. <laughs> reliving, reliving your glory days. Yeah, I used to be. We get really it, good. Really, 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 really good. <laughs> you see that wall red rodeo? Yeah. I used to yeah. be. Still holding on to that one. All right, we're going to cut to a quick bit uh, of talking about Mecca, this event that happened this weekend in Denver. All right, we are in the studio here, back with Mikey LeBlanc and Jules Spadero, the uh, GM of the bomb hole, or head of operations. We're not entirely sure what our title is. Well, it used to be chief of operations, but I felt like that was pretentious, so I think it's general manager now. Slash HR. Slash HR, slash the one who pays the bills, slash <laughs> the one who does the dumpster, <laughs> everything. I think she should be priestess. Operations. Okay, I like that. I like that, too. All right, so we're here to talk Mecca, Mikey. Why don't you break down the concept? Uh, It happened this past weekend. Break down what the concept was and and how it went. Yeah, sure. Mecca is about community. I mean, basically what... I'm a little old. So we used to have SIA Trade Show. We used to have ASR. We used to have this giant global gathering of everybody in the industry. And, uh, you know, people were selling stuff, but really what we... What I feel like we've been missing is where people can just all come together and, and, you know, it's brands, it's community. But what's cool about the Denver event, which we kind of added, was trade shows never really involved the public. So we wanted to combine a rail jam with backcountry. Um, I guess the other thing to rewind a little bit is typically you have a rail jam or you have natural selection or you have, you know, some kind of mental health class. But we wanted to combine so as many pieces of snowboarding were kind of celebrated 
So, you know, we had everything from Red's backyard where the public could come learn to snowboard with a Joey Fava or a Mike Rav or Zeb. They're hanging out. But there's like a five-year-old and these super pros riding. And then we had a backcountry awareness class with Jeff Pensiero, you know, Nick Russell, Bjorn Linus, uh, Hannah Beeman, Pat Moore. Um, and then art show with Jamie Lynn and Scope. Um, so really it was just about kind of celebrating as many elements of snowboarding. And we're, what Mecca really, what my thought and my partner Adam Schmidt is that we're providing a venue for people to be celebrated, people that are doing amazing things, art, music, a um, bunch of bands played, Gap Year. What about uh, Jeremy Jones? Jeremy Jones crushed it. So that was a really cool test. I mean, my kind of baby on this was involving the education part. Um, and Jeremy's a good example. He did as if it doesn't kill you, it doesn't kill you, right before two premieres. So these people came in the door, and I'm like, oh, shit, like, here we go. I think a lot of people might have walked out as that was their favorite part of the evening, potentially. But then, you know, Jamie fans obviously were freaking out, and she was there. Travis fans and the whole Natty Select crew were there. So, you know, it was a real kind of, you know, see what happens with the education thing. I think people loved it. Just Jeff Pensier also did a How I Built Bald Face on Friday, and a ton of people came and really enjoyed his story of how you start from a dream all the way to building heaven on earth. So... And then Des did a suicide prevention training as well. So we're just really trying to bring, uh, there's so many people doing incredible things. And I think professional snowboarding has is great. But the brands have really like latched onto that one thing and just ran with that. I think we're getting a little better now about kind of celebrating more things about snowboarding. But Mecca's about celebrating like we love snowboarding, but we also have these additional things we do. And then inviting in the public to that in a big way because Denver is a huge community of snowboarding and they haven't really had much love. You live here in Salt Lake, you know, there's a premiere every other day. But in Denver, I mean, the, the community that I met was like, wow, thank you so much. We haven't had anything around here. So I'm coming out with a full heart, but also knowing we'll be back next year and we're going to learn a ton and just be back even more popping. So what do you think, Jules? You were there. Honestly, Mikey, I had so much fun. Clearly, I'm here at work today. I can barely form a sentence. I've got the post-Mecca rasp going on. Yeah. Uh, the partying, I'm going to be honest, the partying was pretty much as good as it gets. I, I heard about an alleged swirly, which shall be nameless. <laughs> yeah, there was a consensual yeah. swirly. Someone. I didn't know it was someone. consensual. Yeah, oh yeah, it was like... I thought she I was want... like needed to wake up or something. No, yeah, it was just someone who wanted to experience the swirly. Like, that was kind of what we were on the whole yeah. weekend. Unreal. Actually, on the drive there, um, it's we knew it was going to start good because I was in the minivan with... Jill, Spencer, Stan, Oof. Reed, and Emily, and we were listening to Matthew McConaughey speeches and positive affirmation podcasts, so like, we went in with really good attitude, <laughs> and being there, Denver people are really fun. I know we shit on Denver in this podcast a lot, <laughs> but it, the people are so excited to be there yeah. and just like so down to just like love snowboarding yeah, and be all totally. about it. Yeah, the crew out there was good. I mean, I felt like there was some a lot of fun. The rail jam was dope, but what did you think? honestly about like the setup because i think we learned a bunch we're trying to get feedback what do you think i think the uh i think that the park set setting was really cool and the fact that it was open to the public was so yeah. cool i think i would have liked to see the f like the flow a little better yeah. um just having everything in the same space would have felt more like cohesive yeah. to me and just like yeah. getting everyone there um, but yeah, we were thinking the same thing. Like the park, you've got the you know the big field where the premieres were. There's a rail jam, and then down to the right there was a vendor zone. But we kind of recapped after. What would you think of like everything being kind of accumulated more into a tighter zone? Yeah, I Keep think it. that would have been cool, just because yeah. it's all about community. And yeah. I mean, I saw so many people that like, I went to school in, at CU Boulder, and oh, so cool. I've like seen a lot of people that I knew there. That's dope. And it was so fun, and like you're just walking back and forth and like see it was a lot of walking, but it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So we got consensual swirly. We got uh, the Jamie swirly Lennart was insane. show. We did got. You, did you hit the premieres Friday night too? Uh yeah yeah cool. I hit the premieres Friday night and it was. Uh, yeah. What what was your favorite video, <laughs> Jules? <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, uh, I was actually really more paying attention to the school candy bar tab. Oh shit. Yeah. Nice. Great honest answer. Yeah, and there. we danced a lot and we yeah. had so. Did you karaoke? 
Yeah, karaoke was Saturday sing? night. Um, I sang Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood. It's kind of my go-to. Mm. But Reed put on a show. Moses from Boyfriend Sushi Town put on a show. Desiree. I mean, people really showed up for partying and it was yeah. amazing. Mm. Yeah, we actually it. had this uh, saying the whole time, like just to give you guys an idea. I know on the internet it's called smooth brain when you're just like being an idiot, but we call it soft brain. And we were like the whole time just being soft brain. Mm -hmm. Like everyone was just like as dumb just as it cruising, gets. Just yeah. <laughs> so happy having yeah. fun. Yeah, that's dope. Amazing. What, wanna, was, what was your highlight for the whole thing? Uh, my highlight was meeting the people, like I said. And then I have to, like, I don't know. I, there was a family that flew in from Tahoe with like three kids. There was a group that I was aware of through Ninja. He made an introduction to these guys called uh, Slide Through Saturdays. It's basically like the Chill Foundation, but for adults. And these dudes were smooth and cool. I want to give them a big shout out because they were like the coolest people. And they run, it, you know, they get people that would never have been exposed to snowboarding through like some partnerships with UDOT and mountains. Like they get like 500 people up there. But, but apparently the app is epic. So I want to go out and like check out one of their things. And then just seeing a bunch of old friends. Like, you know, I, you know, you, I, there's people that you see. Um, on the internet or you hear about like that they work at Burton or they work at Union or they work at XXXX and you never really get to see them in person. You know, you might have these like business phone calls, but you don't get to like fuck around with them when, when you're out. And that, that to me was the coolest part. Just meeting like brand new people or people you've heard of or, I mean, I think that's the part that I was missing and Todd wrote his post a while ago, Todd Richards on Instagram about like we've been missing this yep. thing. And I feel like we're that this weekend was like the beginning of that, and we're gonna work. We'll be back next year. Yeah. So, sure. so what are what are we looking to do for next year? What's the game plan? Um, you know, definitely the sort of the skeleton the same. We'll definitely have the rail jam. We'll have the premieres, um, but more education I think is a key for that next year. Um, and shit, I mean, who knows? What what I like about this is. Like I said, we're providing the venues, so I'm expecting or wanting individuals or or groups like charitable charitable groups or brands to be like, this is our story. We want to tell it. Like if, even if you look at our Instagram and look at a Des post or look at you know a Skull Candy post or a Burton post, it's their voice. We're like hosting the voices of these people and brands and artists and musicians. So I. Send them over. Let's just keep making it amazing. There's a lot of amazing people out there, so please send over your ideas and let's make some dope shit. There was a uh, comment that I really liked this weekend from uh, someone I met named Wildcard. Hmm. Shout out to Wildcard. And uh, he, like, Colorado right now is all obsessed with CU Buffs, like with hmm. Sanders, Demi, oh, yeah. and whatever. Dino. And he Dino. was like, he was like at the rail. The people love the rail jam. He was at the rail jam, and he was like. I've been telling my friends, like, they're all at the CU Buffs game, but, like, this is the best thing you could see in Colorado today. That's and I dope. just thought that was Saying we're taking out Super Coach Prime right now? Is that what they're saying? Prime's pretty Prime? dope. But. <laughs> Who's Coach Prime? Dion. Talking about Dion Sanders? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Coach yeah. Prime. He was yeah. worried about getting canceled from the state of Colorado for saying that comment, but I was like, you know what, Wildcard? I think you got the right idea. Mm. Sick name to roll with Wildcard. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah. Killer. Well, I bet a lot of local Rado Squads got to meet their heroes. You got Travis Rice there. You got Jamie Lynn. You got all kinds of heavy Jamie hitters. Anderson. Jamie Anderson. Yeah. Spencer, Jess, all the riders in the jam. Zeb was out. It was just yeah. Cool. It was dope. Sweet. Well, uh, thanks for coming and checking in with Mecca for us, Mikey. We appreciate that. And uh, yeah, check it out next year. I want to say one thing. Yeah. Just thank you for everybody who came out. I appreciate you. Some of my like, you know, just everybody. Like everybody that put. There's a huge crew that put this on. And all the brands, all the people, all the community, I just want to say thank you because that's what it's about is showing up. <coughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Russ didn't either. I'm shouting you out, Russ. You'll be there next year, though. He called me today. All right. All right. Well, Love you all. I appreciate you, Mikey. Thank you. Later. All right. So uh, we're going to get into kind of a premiere video list coming out. I'm sure we forgot some. I'm sorry. This is per, uh, put together by Holden Barth, who is our social media guy, also video connoisseur. Um, so he did a great job, you know, sniffing all of these out. So we'll start off. Obviously, we talked about Rides Rated R. Great video. Saw that premiere was electric. They also have Rides Snowboards Europe Radar. 
Uh, and then we have Brown Cinema's Knights of the Brown Table. Really excited for that video. Should be a fan favorite. Uh, they got Are You Okay with Finn, Gene Sutter, and uh, Sebi Springeth. Solomon Project that we went to the premiere of recently. Really good. Uh, of course, Dorothy is with Emma and Kennedy Deck. Uh, great video that we went to the premiere of as well. Uh, Vans is dropping a video. Uh, we talked about Beyond Metals Casino, which Hailstorm will be in. Uh, we got Get Buck, which is Sebi to Buck's project, which will be fucking awesome. Um, Seb Picard is dropping a video uh, on our YouTube channel, actually, so be, look for that, as well as the Man Boys Tango Echo Chamber, uh, which is also coming out on our YouTube. Uh, TGR put uh, together Flying High Again. Uh, Mike Hatchett put it together. OG Standard Films. I think Bodie's in that one, so that should be good. Lobster has We Are Losers 2. Quicksilver has Sequencer, which should be Flame. You got Red Gerard, who was on the show earlier, is in that one. Um, then we got uh, Burton Snowboards Bloom, will be really good. Public Snowboards Inquire Within. Damn, a lot of videos. There's still more. <laughs> 686 Atlas with uh, Tommy Gesme, newest team rider. That will be really fun to see Gesme out there with Colton, I think, made that, right? They're beautiful combination. Uh, 32 is dropping Bone Crusher. With uh, Fava and Viz and Phil Hansen and the whole 32 squad should be really good. Taylor Elliott's dropping here for you. Uh, there's a GNU video that's coming out. Nitro slash Red Bull Media House is doing Layers. That's a documentary. And also Cake, which is their action video. Uh, there's Stomp or Die 2023. Japanese homies are going to be going buck wild for that. Anna Gasser has Schnitzel's Time. Uh, upper Management has Face Off. Uh, there's also Life is Plastic, should be a great flick. Uh, Emotional Success, and then Pirate Films is putting out uh, a video again as well. And then Carlos Garcia Knight already put out Now is Not a Good Time, and there's Glacier Creek's Pulled Away. Uh, that's, I mean, we're looking at, that's 29, 30 videos. Wow, so, uh, not bad. A lot of snowboard content, and also Nils has a project dropping a with project us. project coming out, yeah. So a lot of stuff's going to be just banging you over the head here in the next few months. So put put the hard hat on and get ready to get uh, obliterated by snowboard hammers. All right, we are back. Uh, we're going to get ready to wrap this thing up. We've got a couple more questions. This one's from Cake Pound Crew. And it's interesting how this one was uh, directed towards Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, what's your great name, by the way? What's your most expensive night you've ever had party? <laughs> um, honestly, not that expensive. I like try to party on uh, other people's dimes. <laughs> I mean, I, those X Games parties, you guys are burning some budge with Monster. Yeah, I mean that's Bottle just like service a all over the place. I mean, yeah, it's like free for all. Like, what, okay, what's the biggest bar tab you've ever can seen? I get a tequila then? soda. And they're like, oh yeah, here's the bottle. <laughs> Do you have that? And, like it's pretty crazy. Um, I, I I I don't know. I'm kind of I kind of lost for words on this question. I mean, there's just been so many big nights for him. So no, yeah. I I mean I don't know. I mean, do some of those monster parties, the bar tab of those monster parties, are probably hundred grand. Like the easy in Vegas, like yeah. there's I mean, easy. It, it, that's almost like Nils' natural habitats, maybe like trail running in the Wasatch Mountains. Like your natural habitat is like monster after party <laughs> bottle service <laughs> fist pumping. We know our lanes, <laughs> and that's the beauty of snowboarding. There's a lane for everyone. Oh, that, that, that's still uh, <laughs> thirty years old. That's 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 my lane now. Oh, cool. You on. and Carrot did, Top did it, holding it, it down it, in Vegas, it, yeah. <laughs> dude. I saw him in Vegas this year. Sure Carrot Top. So I was like, oh my god, Just looking crazy. Yeah. Bane's yeah. Okay, uh, we got another one from Hot Snake. Uh, this one's for Nils. How many different characters did you stunt double for in Disney's <laughs> Cloud Nine? <laughs> Watch Cloud oh, Nine if you man, have Yeah, it. first Disney off, movie. Uh, yeah, I stunt doubled for a Disney movie out of high school. I was broke living on Griffin Siebert's couch, and I lucked out with a little gig. Um, but yeah, in doing so, I stunt doubled for, I think, three, three or four people. Um, and they were all chicks. In the movie. So they were putting, like, pigtails on my helmet and stuff like that. That was and, when like, I met out. Nils. I saw him getting <laughs> lapped up the Brighton half-pipe with a ponytail sticking out of the back of his helmet. I was like, what the it was is going on with this It was really dude? good for my core score to get into the Brighton scene. It took a couple of years to claw my way out of that one. <laughs> oh, my 
go. Amazing. All right. Well, uh, it's been a great it's been a great show today, guys. Yeah. yeah. Fun chatting with you, Zach. Hi. Good time. Can you? Nils. Highs, lows, yeah. everything in between. Amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Banter marathon. Yeah. Yeah. I think Student? you need to do one show with uh, J-Stone, just tech. Just product? <laughs> yeah. Six just hours tech. of product talk? <laughs> we'll get him in here with like down the hatches. <laughs> Dude, no go leaving. With, like a, a computer or something, a projector. I don't know if you could set that up, but like you can be like doing like AutoCAD stuff. Like a, like a po- PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 PowerPoint. Presented just, by OnlyFans. Can you <laughs> <laughs> just take us through a K2 sales meeting? <laughs> PowerPoint, basically. That's all we really Easy. need. Yeah. That's all day. Uh, Silk? Great work today. Thanks, Thank Silk. Thanks, Silk. Mullet's good looking good. Should we give a round of applause to Silk? Yeah, let's yeah. give a round of applause to Silk. Yeah, yeah, nice Silk. Thank, Silk. You. Thank you. All right. Well, everybody that uh, tunes in to group chat, we really appreciate you guys. Uh, it's been super fun. And uh, we got another podcast coming at you next Wednesday. Over and out from the bomb hole. Great show, guys. Uh,